Hello, everyone, and welcome to Culture of Gaming's Power Up Podcast, episode 111, being recorded live on April 4th, 2020. My voice probably sounds different, and that's because I'm not in my usual location. Anyway, I'm, of course, your host, Taylor, and this week I'm joined by Anthony. How are you? Good. You can't see me. I'm trying to add in sources because Streamlab absolutely sucks uh, because they updated it. Um, and We're doing it live! <laughs> exactly. Andrew's now here, so yeah, you still can't see me for the time being, but um, okay. uh, I'm doing uh, well. We'll come, back to you. we'll come back to you in a second <laughs> while you get that sorted out. So, uh, sure. Andrew, you're here, of course. Welcome, Thank as you. usual. Uh, what have you been up to? I am locked completely down. Nice. Uh, still. Delish. So, it has been... I've been... I don't know what I've been doing, honestly, okay. the past week. <laughs> I just yeah. walk around my it's house just, a lot. I it's just clean. been one giant blur. Pretty much. I have to yeah. check the calendar to make sure what day it is. It's pretty odd, to be okay. honest. But I'm doing nice. okay. Uh, Game-wise, though, it's weird. I like. I feel like like I'm home all day, but I can't get myself to like, play games during the day, during the week. Mm. I don't know. It just feels weird. It feels weird. kind of weird, right? right? Yeah, I'm like, I yeah. can't. Maybe I'll take like a 15-minute break or something to like play like... I don't know, a couple matches of Call of Duty or something, but I like can't just sit there and like game all day. It's weird. It just doesn't feel right. Um, so I haven't been playing much at all because then I'm just like, well, I'm bored. I guess I'll just go to sleep uh, at 10 o'clock or whatever. Um, nice. So uh, yeah, it's been okay. You know, Call of Duty, he's, he's been playing a little bit of that. I've been jumping back into Hearthstone, the Battlegrounds mode. Uh, okay. It's like the auto chess battler kind of thing they have. It's, it's fine. Oh, there annoying. we go. That's um, and then, of course, more Animal Crossing. Still kind of putting about like an hour into that, maybe throughout the day. Okay. Cool. I've got some new villagers. Uh, anything cool happen? Oh yeah, that Bunny Day event is going oh, on right no, now. Oh no, yeah. Um, I saw that. I don't know how I feel about the Bunny Day event yet. Like, what is the... oh. So okay. the Bunny Day event, it's like Easter, basically. Yeah. yeah. Bunny Day, right? Um. So this like weird, creepy bunny. But he's not a bunny. It's like his name is Zipper. He's got a big zipper on his back. So clearly there is something inside of his bunny. If it's another human or another animal, both seem wrong. A bunny and a bunny? <laughs> yeah, mildly yeah. upsetting, but yeah. okay. Um, yeah. And he's creepy and he's hidden eggs everywhere. And so you just like collect eggs and they um, they can like build special things that are really ugly. Like, oh, you get a, an egg chair or an egg clock. Um, super ugly. I don't want any of that stuff. <laughs> Um, so enough. it's kind of annoying actually because you're like, oh, I want this my normal wood, and then yeah. you eggs drop out of the dang uh, trees. So it's like, oh, this, this is kind of dumb. I don't want is it eggs, um, yeah. but it's fine, I guess. Whatever. I don't. I, the game is just you know whatever. It's so laid back. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Whatever. Fair enough. It's, yeah. it's fine. It's I'm enjoying yeah. it. Okay. Uh, Matt, uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, oh. frequent guest as usual. Uh, I'm sure everybody is familiar with Matt somewhat. What have you been up to? Um, what have I been up to? Oh, outside of your standard Counter Strike, I've actually played a. Uh, I finished Doom this week. Doom nice. nice. On the Very other nice. spectrum of Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, <laughs> that was definitely a that was definitely a fun time playing that game. It was a it was a great time. I spent most of my time this week doing that. So. Not much in terms of other games. Okay. But it's been good. That's good. That's good. That's good. There you go. Oh, I, I forgot to mention good old Stilt Fella. I was playing oh, that on stream the other week. It's oh, uh, okay. a really <laughs> dumb game where you're on stilts and mm -hmm. you use the analog sticks to walk. It's really f it's fun, but really just it's like a co-op or, or whatever That's kind of game. Oh, okay. That yeah, sounds yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of silly. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, Matt, just Doom Eternal and CS, usual stuff? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Doom right, has been enough. a lot of fun, so it's been, I, I've sunk most of my time in like completing each of the levels and actually finishing the game, which was a... I think it was around like 15-ish hours when I finished it. Nice. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right, Anthony, uh, we're coming back to you. So uh, yeah. now that I assume everything's sorted out, uh, I should probably get the Twitch window up here so I can monitor chat also. Um, yeah, what have you been uh, what have you been up to? Um, I'm not sick, which is good. Uh, let's Excellent. Start. 
Um, as far as gaming was, I haven't really been gaming a whole heap. I've mainly been like working on some videos for YouTube and sure. um, played a tiny bit of Doom, but like okay. only for like an hour. And mm-hmm. I need, I really need to get back into that. I haven't really played Animal Crossing too much either. Um, so I can't really say that I've been doing too much in there. Uh, as far as other games, what else have I been playing? That's, that's it, I think. I haven't even gamed at all, hardly. You know how you go through stages where it's like... I do not yeah. Gaming, and then not gaming, and then... It's and just waves. <laughs> the waves, yeah. exactly. I need to get back into Modern Warfare as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, like, it's been a pretty quiet week for me. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I think it's all been right. a quiet week for most of us. Yeah, it's, it's looks like it. Um, mm. Yeah, in terms of gaming this past week, has been much for me either. <laughs> like, I've been moving this past week for a solid couple of days there. And then it's just like, uh, yeah, just getting settled in a new place. Then, uh, you know, it's like my parents are like, hey, you want to hang out during quarantine and everything? And it's like, sure. So now I'm over at uh, their place for a while. Uh, and they live in a different country than the U.S. So I was traveling pretty much oh. all of yesterday. And so, um, nice. yeah. <laughs> And so I'm kind of limited in what I can play. Now I have a uh, laptop that has a pretty up-to-date quad-core processor, so that's nice. But I also have a uh, external GPU enclosure with a uh, 1650 Super in it that I have hooked up to it. And so um, I am still kind of limited in what I can play, but it is a little bit, it is much better than just integrated graphics alone. Uh, so I'm pretty much out like Cities, uh, Skylines, uh, Civ 6, uh, Kerbal Space Program. Can you and... play EVE on potato mode? Yeah. I can probably do some MMOs too, so... Eve's yeah. not that, like, strenuous to run. No, it's on, not. On max settings, depending on the place you're in. Sure. Yeah. If you're doing, like, when the Tridlavian storms, I'd imagine on max settings, and start cranking a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but other than that, quiet, for, uh, quiet weekend gaming. Play a little bit of Cities before the podcast, play a little bit of Civ Sits with a friend before the podcast. And that's, uh, well, you can't that's play Doom. pretty much <laughs> been it, no. And I'm kind of kicking myself because I didn't finish Doom Eternal uh, to, uh, uh, before leaving. And, um, yeah, I know. And uh, it's because <laughs> you, actually, Matt, it's like, oh, I want to get the Unmaker. It's like, oh, okay, I want to do that too. So it's like, uh, last time I played Doom Eternal, I was going back... <laughs> I was going back through and getting everything done to get the Unmaker. Oh, it's and, all Matt's fault. Yeah. yeah, as opposed to actually just finishing the game. Look, it's, Matt's it's fault. a lot easier going through the levels the second time. It, it like Depending on it how is. fast you go through it, it can be like 50 to 75% of your original uh, time spent in it. Yeah. Okay. But I won't know for a while now, will I? <laughs> Yeah, I've, been, yeah. I've been thinking about, I have my Switch with me too, I've been thinking about uh, playing, uh, maybe succumbing to Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, sure it takes you three days to yeah. download it. I, yeah. I don't know if I like that game, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> it's weird, like, you, you're just kind of like Tom Nook's lackey. Okay. Is that every Animal Crossing <laughs> That's game, That's accurate. I, I, I don't know, like, I, okay. I haven't played any Animal Crossings, really, but... Um, um, John Spleece is an expert when it comes to Animal Crossing. So. Oh, okay. I just know that like he's making me do all of the work. Oh, I yeah. Know. I don't know how I feel about it, because he's taking all the credit. The frigid raccoon? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's kind of the way I it is with the rant most. on Twitter, where this dude just kind of went off on everybody talking about Tom Nook, and then he <laughs> found out it was a raccoon in Animal Crossing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh what? Know. What is this? I'm not, I, I did not see that. So, it, on, on Twitter, this guy was like... He's seeing all this stuff about Tom Nook and about how he's like ma- forcing people to do jobs and whatnot. And he thought he was, and this person thought he was some sort of politician here in the U.S. <laughs> and that okay. everybody just kind of hated because that's how the U.S. is. Oh, and he's like, goodness. y'all had me tripping because I thought this dude was a, a politician here in the U.S. But it turns out he's a goddamn raccoon. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, the funniest thing. Oh, autofocus. <laughs> Give Please. A moment. There we go. There we Thank go. you. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was a really good rant. It was pretty funny. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, let's see if yeah. I can find it. Uh, let's see. I was going to talk. Oh, yeah. I have a bone to pit with Modern Warfare. The, oh, no. You know, the NW2 campaign remastered on PS4 for a month. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, right. Are you actually kidding me? I mean, yeah. It's not very cool. 
But it's just um, a minor. Uh, um, so, a little... We're probably not going to talk about this, but talking about Modern Warfare 2, um, the multiplayer is coming. That's been confirmed. But it's still, really? like, a it few is? months away. Yep. Really? All the stuff I've read said there wouldn't be multiplayer. Well, uh, there's a news thing that I saw on N4G about it. Oh, boy. I'll try. Because, N4, because N4G is so trustworthy. Uh, I know. Let me have a quick look. Okay. I mean, um, yeah. I, want some? I was going to say, if they do do multiplayer, it would be weird, right? It would eat into the... It would split the player base. Yeah. Didn't huh. they literally just mm. say, we don't want to do multiplayer because it will split the player base. Instead, we're going to do like a DLC patch based on... Yeah, stuff. that makes sense. We well, that might be what they're going to do. Like, they might have it oh, all okay. in, like, the one game, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, sure. So. sure. What, are there, like, classic Modern Warfare 2 maps that are, like, really good? Uh, there's a couple of them that are... Uh, actually, every Modern Warfare 2 map. Honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna look this up now. They're, like, inherently better than... Um, like Modern Warfare, like Modern Warfare 2019's maps in general. Uh, Rust was never in match my team, but it was like a fun, like private. Uh, map I I actually whatever. dislike Rust completely. I oh, fun. okay, whatever. Um, yeah. Good luck to you. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, Skid Row, uh, Scrapyard. Yeah, Scrapyard's pretty fun. Okay, um, Scrapyard's one with the cranes, isn't it? Uh, no, Scrapyard. That's a high rise. Uh, oh, Scrapyard sure. is oh. the uh, airplane graveyard. Um, oh, sure. I liked Afghan a lot. That was a yeah. Good Afghan one. is fun. Uh, we have like, hold on. I found. Uh, <laughs> what's happening? He's having Azir a Azir Cave. Azir Cave is trying to like the spiritual successor to Afghan. I do like that that level. Mm, sure. Yeah, it, it isn't bad. Um, let's see what else. There's Sub Zero, that really cool uh, stone map, the sub map. Um, Sub Two. Yeah, I don't know. All the oh, all the wow. MW Two maps are pretty solid. And I remember, remember. Yeah. for one of their uh, DLCs, uh, they brought in some COD 4 maps, and, you know, Crash is one of them. So, that, mm -hmm. but that yeah. map's already in there. So. Favela. Anyway. I feel like I yeah, like Favela. that level. Favela was good. good. I remember yeah. that, too. Huh. All right. Whatever, just give us Modern Warfare 2 again. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. That's all the people truly want. Um, yeah. So, uh, well, with that, uh, you know, still bummed that the campaign is on PS4 for a month, but whatever. Uh, I've already played it. It'll just be nice to play yeah. it again, you know. And if yeah. I've waited another month, it's been like uh, ten years. It's fine. Um, yeah. The PS4 <laughs> yeah. version probably looks month? the same as the PC version out currently. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh oh. Okay. Probably looks um, a bit better or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, well, with that little bit of uh, intro wrapped up uh, going through the housekeeping stuff um we are our main site is of course cultureofgaming.com there you can find the latest gaming news reviews opinion pieces editorials etc etc all that fun stuff and then we have a community community discord a link to which you can find on the right hand side sidebar of the main site where you can chat with everyone you see on the podcast and then some and then we have two Facebook pages, one for the main site and one for the Power Up Podcast. They are Facebook.com slash uh, the Todd Network and Facebook.com slash Power Up Podcast, uh, you know, respectively. Of course, I believe the names are pretty indicative of <laughs> what they correspond to. And then Twitter at the Todd Network, Instagram at Culture of Gaming, YouTube.com slash Culture of Gaming, and Twitch.tv slash Culture of Gaming. There you can find live streams as well as podcasts going live. And if you're looking for some audio content or maybe some video content uh, to uh, get you through the uh, quarantine, you can find a repository of all 110 past episodes <laughs> of the podcast on our YouTube channel if you want to watch it, or on anywhere you can get audio podcasts like Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, etc. So yeah, repository of all the podcasts is up. So go check those out and kind of go through a decently comprehensive history of the past roughly two years in gaming, week by week, news by news story. So. For the yeah. last half year has just been us talking about E3 and how bad it is. Pretty much. <laughs> Recount the E3 Accurate. story endless times. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, well, I guess moving before the site recap, kind of a weekly check-in. How's the quarantine treating you guys? Still doing good? It's fine. It does not affect my day-to-day -day living at all, I'll be honest. 
Okay. Uh, really? Being an Fair essential enough. worker, I'm like, it doesn't bother me. Because I have, still have to go to my place of work. No, I have to do everything. I go out and do my general shopping. It's fine. Like, nothing has changed really for me. Mm. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. yeah. Andrew, Andrew, you've been pacing around your place of residence. Pretty much. I don't, like I said, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just walking around, like, cleaning or doing something. Because okay. everything's closed, right? I'm in yeah. California, so everything is closed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, there should Anthony? be. Um, Anthony, how's the, how's the island going? It's, it's basically like it's we're technically on lockdown. The border's closed. Uh, nobody can get in to my mm -hmm. state where I am. Nobody can get out sure. either. Um, there's no flights. Apart from that, like all your supermarkets and everything are open. Um, I am not working currently because of I uh, because of different reasons. Um, so. I mean, nothing's really different. You can still go and get shopping. You can still go and do whatever you need to do. You can still go and, like, go to the beach if you want to. Um, oh, okay. And it's not spreading here, hardly. I don't know how, but it's it's we've basically got it under control. So they're saying that this should be over by the next, like, couple of months, maybe. So we'll see what happens. But aside from that, every day-to-day -day stuff's pretty much the same. Oh, okay. Hmm. I will say uh, day to day stuff for me, even back when I was uh, in the U.S., was quite different because you know switched the whole online school thing sure. for my university. Just all of a sudden, which haven't been Zoom bombed yet, um, which is. I think they uh, they changed, they updated that. I think. Did they? Okay. Yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk about Zoom a little bit later because I do kind of have a bone to pick with it. Also. Oh um, Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I mean that's pretty much been it. Um, but it's just been kind of weird, just like everyone, I wasn't affected too, too much, because like, you know, I was still able to uh, do like food catering and whatnot, because that's an essential service, but sure, sure. yeah, and keep that going. But like, just kind of like, it felt weird not like seeing everyone else going around their lives, just like, you know, in the general public and everything, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, it's, yeah, it's kind of it's just like, oh, you, know, you have to eat takeout, you have to eat, you know, drive through yeah. stuff like that. You can't go in and sit down at a place, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so yeah, a little bit weird, but anyway, uh, June just fine. Other than that, no one's in my family is sick, thankfully. Nice. Uh, and my monitor just turned off. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we're good. We know it's gotten darker. Okay, we're good. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so uh, jumping into uh, the uh, new segment uh, that we've been doing is the weekly site recap, and where we kind of run through the reviews and the featured articles that have gone up on the site over the past week since the last recording of the podcast. So uh, the first review that we have up is: Do I seriously not have the site pulled up? I'm doing really well. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's silly. That's out of it. it well is done. Call of Duty Warzone. You know, the uh, Battle Royale that came out for a COD. You know what this is. Uh, we all know what this is, I think. Uh, this was reviewed by Adam Wiles. And um, basically, overall, 7 out of 10. The good, excellent shooting mechanics. I mean, that's just a COD thing in general, right? Or yeah. Modern Warfare thing in general, right? Varied map. Okay, that's good for the Battle Royale map. Incredible sound design. I mean, that's Modern Warfare 2019 in general, again. Unique respawn mechanic. Okay, that's a fair point. The, the gulag system is pretty cool. Yeah. Right? From mm. what I've seen of it, right? Yeah. And then... Uh, <laughs> Quotes the... taken out of context. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Flip what? that. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah. Uh, the bad, uh, he says, lats originality. Um, okay. And technical hiccups. Okay. Um... Maybe I should have read to see how he elaborates on this, because, <laughs> I don't know, it's like, the brief stint I had on PC, everything was running fine and as normal. And uh, I mean, yeah. is it fair to say lats originality for a battle royale, because of how many there are? True, true, but I Maybe. mean, like, something like Apex, or, you know, something like that is a little bit unique, I guess. Fortnite's unique, because you can build. Oh, okay. Whereas, it's got, um, like, a style to it. Yeah, oh, it's not I got you. just like military man shoots other military man, right? Okay, but this one is more military man shoots other military <laughs> man. I hate PUBG okay. or like yeah. Um, well, I mean, PUBG doing? even had a style to it too, with all like the gear and stuff, <laughs> like that they had, you know, like the frying pan and whatnot. Iconic. I mm, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, so, like, this yeah. 
you know, like, oh, like, Iron Welder Man is, like, the Mario, you know, like, he's, like, the yeah. face of that game. Warzone doesn't really have anything that sets it apart from other pe- from other Battle Royales, I guess you could say. Oh. Like, oh, dude. aesthetically, but, like, gameplay-wise, I think it's good. I think the Gulag is plenty original way of yeah. handling a respawn system. Yeah, right? They certainly weren't the first to have a respawn, <laughs> uh, respawn system for uh, Battle Royale. But uh, yeah, they're just mad that he gets the, the like, 357 revolver every time. Exactly. Uses, yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I only played one match of it, so no, I've not played any of it. Okay, I can't really weigh in too much uh, on it. Andrew, you 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 were playing it a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I played with some friends last week, not this week, uh, or two weeks ago, I guess. Um, sure. It's good. Like I said, I, I enjoy it. It's it's if you don't care, like I don't really care about winning that much when I'm playing with friends. Uh-huh. I'm like yeah. having a good time and like, I don't know. Like I mentioned earlier, like it lets you be aggressive, like with the UAVs, with the yeah. sensors and stuff. So you can just be like, "All right, what are we doing next?" Like, dude, there's guys like right over there. Let's go now and get them. So it's it's kind of fun. Sure. Okay. Uh, do you think it deserves a seven out of ten? Um, seven. Out, that, that to me sounds. I mean, it depends right on who who's you know if you like battle royales and stuff like that. Like, sure. Like the solo experience probably would be around that. Like, I don't like solo battle royales. Oh, okay. Um, but, like, the team stuff is really fun, I find. Uh, okay. So, I don't know. Okay. Anthony, have you played uh, any Battle Royale? Uh, so, I have played, like, three matches of Warzone, um, as I've said last week, I think it was, and, like, this time as well. I don't like it at all. I much okay. prefer, like, Apex or something like that. I did play single player, like, single, whatever the heck it's called, solos. Um, yeah. and there was one fight that I was having with, um, with this one guy. He was up on the roof of this, like, massive 20-story, you know, 20-story building. And I've got a sniper, and I'm, like, just shooting at him. And I think I nailed him, like, three times. Like, once in the chest and twice in the head. He didn't die. Okay. He that ca- feels really bad, man. Yeah, so then he, like, parachuted off his building... And I didn't have any guns because I just landed. I only had like a sniper rifle. Parachuted off his building, and he had a flamethrower. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know how, but he had like what game were you talking? Oh, it was like a flame grenade thing. Um, and I just died immediately. Flamethrower and grenades are very different things. Okay, well, I I burnt to death. Oh, like a Molotov, probably. I burnt to death. Is that in Warzone? I shouldn't tell you. I burnt to death. So, I think yeah. I'm fairly experts. sure there's something We're in. All experts. I know, right? I mean, it, I guess the is it a what? I don't know. You can get a fire grenade. In those yeah. Games. Well, hey, look, there's Molotovs in the campaign, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure they're okay. in the battle royale. Also, Willem Vote. What the heck is that for his name? Willem Votes. Our favorite favorite game. Who's what's everybody's favorite game? I like too many to just qualify it as one favorite game. My go my go to answer is Street Fighter Two. Nah. Hyper, Hyper Edition is my favorite. Um, Breath of the Wild. I'm a huge. Yeah, do you want to let's Zelda cast it Breath of the Wild? Let's go. Breath of the Wild. Probably. Okay. Um, I would probably go. Breath of the Wild is kind of like yeah. favorite thing I've played the past ten years. Um, as so. far as like for me, it's like nostalgia value. Probably Oblivion, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Okay. Um, nobody likes that game, but what? I enjoy it. Need speed underground too. Okay. I played a lot of that actually nice. randomly. I remember like the drag. Need for editions. speed or oblivion? Uh, need for speed. Okay. okay. Sure. Need speed too. <laughs> you weren't going oh, to hell. That's not fun. <laughs> oblivion is basically hell, so whatever. All right, so yeah, Warzone review is up. Go read it. Check out this guy's thoughts on it. The next review uh, that we had go up on the site is the Borderlands Three DLC. Guns, love, and tentacles, and more on uh, Gearbots later. But this is doll. Uh, this is a DLC expansion for Borderlands Three. Cost uh, fifteen dollars. I'm sorry, fourteen ninety nine USD. Fourteen dollars. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, that one penny that is important. Back. Okay, one penny is important. And then uh, this was reviewed by uh, I think Cat- Will Nelson. Will Not Nelson, Callum, yeah. Will. yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, he gave it a 7.5. Uh, the good uh, characters of Wainwright and Hammerlock. Okay. The HP Lovecraft inspired visuals and lore. Lots of content. Some of the writing is great. More Borderlands 3 at its best. And the bad. Some annoying characters. Okay. Lackluster yeah, boss possible. fights. Okay. Predictable story elements. Okay. Forced theme of relationships. I'm going. I don't, uh, you know what? I'm going on a whim and saying it was in the title. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> that's just, that's not my reaction. My knee jerk reaction to it is like. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I'm seeing that it's like a lot of like game, like main game criticisms are apparent in DLC, DLC reviews also. It's like, oh, problems with the main game continue in the DLC. I mean, what do you expect? Sure. Yeah. Competency. Any y'all played Borderlands 3? No. 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 Not since E3. <laughs> I was going to say, besides that one yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. It's finally on Steam, but, like, to very little fanfare, and it's just like, wow, no one cares anymore. So, no, uh, I feel like that game was on sale, like, big time, and Maybe. then it got re-released yeah. on Steam, and now it's back to normal price, so, like, now is not the time to even yeah. buy in on it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so uh, go ahead, and uh, if you are a uh, Borderlands 3 um, fan, go ahead and check out our review and see maybe you want to pick up that DLC. Interesting uh, name the... for it. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like it. Um, the uh, next uh, review we have it up is for uh, Totally Reliable Delivery Service, which is a uh, PS4 game uh, developed by uh, Tiny Build. Same and, people uh, who this... did um, Overcooked, I believe. Oh, okay. He looks like the same people who did uh, Human Fall Flat. He looks like Human Fall Flat, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. That's similar to, it looks similar to Overcooked, at least. Yeah. Okay. This was reviewed by uh, Callum Marshall, and uh, running through the review summary here, he gave it a 7 out of 10. Wow, lots of, like, lots of mids going up this week, apparently. Uh, yeah, brilliant slapstick Remember, gameplay. Remember, 7 is good. Yeah, 7 yeah. is good. 7 um, is good. Brilliant slapstick gameplay, varied vehicle options, and cute sound and art design. The bad lack of female customization options, inconsistent textures and animation, poor public online experience. With a summary of, if you're looking for a fun, focused game with a laugh a minute content, with laugh okay, a laugh a minute content, then look no further than totally reliable delivery service. This game is a spiritual successor to the obnoxious controlled games like Goat Simulator or Octodad. It won't live long to the memory, though for a quick bits of mayhem and fun in equal measure, pick up this one at a very reasonable price. Did he no, mention it's... Overcooked at all during this review? I don't think it's the same people. Oh. He did who not. Okay, okay, wait, so who did Overcooked? Um I don't know. Okay. All right, uh, I'm just saying none of us have played this one. Uh, I haven't. However, uh, it is free on the Epic uh, Store right now. Yikes. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, if you important. want a free game, you have the Epic installer, you got one. Have so. you played Fortnite and been too lazy to uninstall the installer? I actually I had I had the Epic thing with nothing on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to download this. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Uh, Overcooked was um, developed by Team Seventeen and Correct. Ghost Town Games. Uh, okay. Good nine out of ten. Um, Willem, I will follow up on your question. Oh, on your statement about Borderlands being glitchy. Did they actually try and patch it, or did they just like give up and say we want your money? I guess I don't you could say. Um, because apparently, yeah. according to his comment, Borderlands was so glitchy on consoles even after the first few months yeah. of it being. Uh, well, released. I couldn't tell you. Nah, I couldn't, couldn't tell you. Fair enough. They made Hello Neighbor. And then finally, the last yeah, for you to go up, and this oh, actually, shit. this is hot off the presses. This went up five hours ago as Resident Ooh. Evil 3 review. Will Nelson, the new one, I guess. Um, right? Just like they yeah, made it kind of like RE2. Resident Evil um, 3 remake. This is. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this was reviewed by uh, Will Nelson, and his summary is he stored it in 8.5, which is solid. And uh, the good, uh, action-packed thrill ride from start to finish, great characters, world and progression, nemesis is a worthy foe, an audio and visual masterclass, the bad, lack of replayability, short five-hour campaign, yikes. Okay. No. I've, I've been watching some of this game, and I'm like, this looks fantastic, but yeah. I don't know if I can drop 60 bucks on a five-hour game right now. 
and lack of choice that was present in the original. He says, RE3 is the video game equivalent of Die Hard. It has great characters, a simple yet effective story, a terrifying villain, villain, astounding action, and it's a great time. Also, like a movie, the remake of RE3 struggles under the weight of what came before it. Mm. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I have not picked this one up yet. I probably won't. Yeah. I'm not really a fan of Resident Evil, to be honest. I, could, I couldn't. I have the I have the second one like on my desk, and I'm like, I need to pop that in and just beat it. <clears throat> yeah. So I might like, do that. I, I had problems dropping forty dollars on a Firewatch when it came out for a four hour game. It's a uh, good game at the end, but like Jesus, it was the price. Firewatch. Okay. That's. Firewatch, I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm. Put, but, oh, I think I picked that up for like free off Humble Bundle or something. Mm, I didn't yeah. like it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, any interest in RE3, Anthony? What was the score that he gave us? 8.5. Uh, personally, I probably won't be playing it, but um, okay. I have seen like a couple of other reviews. People have been giving it like 5 out of 10s and like absolutely hating things. this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it seems like a mixed bag kind of like death stranding a bit you either love it oh, or you okay. hate it um it's sure it does have some unique elements compared to resident evil 2 um mm-hmm. so yeah i may pick it up if it's like 10 bucks or something but not <laughs> at the moment to okay. be honest fair enough yeah mm-hmm. it's like i don't know if i was gonna play this i'll probably wait for a sale because yeah kind of just to buy 60 dollars for a five hour experience you know exactly uh, so although i'm sure the experience is quite good <laughs> um anyway uh, yeah, and then that's going to take us out of the reviews, and let's uh, dip into the tech news space just a little bit. Matt, uh, HP yes. apparently has a gaming brand under it, much like Dell has uh, Alienware. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. sorry, this is this is uh, Lenovo. Sorry, <laughs> I was about to say, HP. this is Lenovo. Yeah, um, so Lenovo. yeah, similar to how Dell has Alienware as their um, big-named uh, gaming brand for all that stuff. HP's Lenovo? gaming brand is Omen. That's right. Yeah, HP has yeah. Omen. Lenovo has Legion, which I think is a pretty cool name. Um, so, to give you an idea, Le- uh, the, Le- the Lenovo Legion brand is coming out with some new laptops. Um, oh, they nice. are naming it the 5i and the 7i. Personally, I think this, the naming scheme is simple enough where it works, but I don't like that it's too similar to CPU brand names. Does the 5i have a i5 in it? Um, well, what it does have is it has Intel... Oh, I'm trying to read through it right now. I'm trying to remember the exact wording. Intel's uh, 10th Gen H series CPUs. Okay. So yes, okay. it could have an i5, i7, or i3 in there. Nice, um, nice. Their mobile processors. It also features actually a rather large range of a of a, of graphics cards from you know the IGPs, the integrated graphics processors. All the way up to what supposedly people are saying is the the RTX 2080 Super in there. Interesting. Which, mm. which is fascinating. Obviously, yeah. as you can imagine, there would be quite a large jump in price with that. Uh-huh. But uh, all of it's also based off the NVIDIA's Max Q architecture, which is a less powerful, less power hungry uh, version of their more standard cards. Okay. So, which is works perfectly for mobile use. What is also interesting, which I think is about time they got around to it, is they're adding uh, NVIDIA's new Advanced Optimus program, which monitors your level of workload that you're doing on graphics computing and either switches between the integrated graphics processor, which is obviously a lot more efficient than if you use the 2080 the entire time. Nice. Sure. And it'll switch back and forth uh, between the two without you having to do anything for the best efficiency out of a one-time charge you can get. Convenient. Yeah, very convenient depending on the workloads that you t- like to do mm-hmm. so what is more surprising it took them forever to do this yeah really <laughs> yeah i mean how long have been how long have been phones doing this i mean phones have been using because they have had like separate cores they have a less efficient core that's yeah. like or less power hungry than a more power hungry core that's better at processing mm-hmm. i mean apple's been doing it for what like four years minimum four or five years i think yeah, um, so it's it's interesting that it's kind of taken laptops this long to get around to that. But it's it's cool to finally see it's getting done, so I'm happy with it. Okay. Um, to give you an idea as well, um, for price ranges, the i the I almost said i5, <laughs> the Lenovo Legion 
uh, 5i uh, with an RTX 2060, and it will start at a 999 USD or $1,000. And its bigger brother, which is the 7i, will have a RTX 2070 starting at $1,200. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's a fair bit of cash. Yeah. I mean, laptops has always been, especially gaming laptops, have definitely always been more of a premium item in that regard. So yeah. as you can expect, there is a bigger bag associated with them. Yeah. Um, the exact differences, we don't know just yet, at least from what the press briefing I was given. So... More mm -hmm. details will come in the future in terms of exact specs. Okay. All right. So uh, we're just going to wait and see. It kind of looks uh, promising. Uh, yeah. Promising it's a line of gaming laptops. What's, what's at least pretty nice in my opinion, kind of like how the Blade Stealth is a very sleek design. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, at least the images they've shown us from the Legion, which I will actually link in the chat. Thank you. There you go. Uh, it looks rather sleek in its design. I mean, it looks... It doesn't look like you're rolling up to a board meeting and whipping out, like, this behemoth of a laptop. Okay, like that's, always, that's always a benefit. <laughs> yeah. You could bring it into a meeting and it would be acceptable. All right, you know how it's, like, those really <laughs> fifth, like, Acer Predator laptops and everything? Do you can just imagine yeah. rolling up to a board meeting with one of those? Be like... I've, I've uh... was one of those... A couple of meetings I've attended at ASU when I was there. Mm -hmm. There was a person who just like rolled up with an like one of those Predator laptops and it was like Jesus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like seeing the guys with the gaming laptops and scrolling everything on like these really tiny desks just trying to balance it. And it's, it's like wow, super heavy thing. too, right? Yeah, they're carrying oh, yeah. around with their pads and shit. Yeah. yeah. I remember one kid who would uh come in and he'd have the 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 fan kickstand for it, so you know how there's like you can angle it and it has the fans <laughs> built into it to help cooling. So it's just super loud or. He just, he always found a seat by an outlet and he would just always do it. It was the craziest thing. To be okay. fair, he played League in the middle of class. I was going to say, yeah, he had to be playing games. Uh, yeah, he always played like League or something in the middle of the class. It was great. Not even trying. No. Nice. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well, uh, college gaming laptop stories aside, uh, I don't know. I, Anthony's probably just like uh, dealing with his cat or something. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, in terms of like initial looks, I mean, it's a laptop. We need more info before we could really give any sort of ideas of, you know, oh, Jesus, there we go. Yes. In terms of, like, how well this would work or, you know, in terms of its price for performance or anything like that. Right, yeah. right. I mean, starting at $1,000 is pretty... It, it's damn. Damn. <laughs> it's damn. <laughs> it's damn. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Damn, boy. Damn, boy. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, moving on. From all that, unless Matt, you have anything else to add? Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I figured that's the best thing. Yeah. Fair Jumping right into the news. Um, our leading gaming news uh, story today is uh, coming from Kotaku and written by the Shry Guy himself. Uh, sources, despite huge sales, Borderlands 3 developers are getting stiffed on bonuses. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh. Well... Here we go. Uh, you know, Brandy Pitchford must have, you know, called up his magician friend because she uh, she hit all the money somewhere. She made it disappear. Where did He's go? a magician too, so. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. was the, the that was his drive. biggest trick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was he the thumb anyway. drive guy? Yeah. The thumb drive guy? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. this is the thumb drive guy. <laughs> the, the infamous <laughs> Randy thumb drive Pitchford of yeah. Gearbox <laughs> Software. <laughs> you know. Um, all right, uh, Shry Guy goes on to write, uh, the video game Borderlands 3 was a big sales success when it launched last fall, according to its publisher 2K, which described it as a billion-dollar global brand. That's why it was shocking to employees at Gearbots, the developer of the game, when the studio CEO, Randy Pitchford, told them yesterday that they would not receive the significant royalty bonuses they expected. Damn. Employees at the studio will get small bonus checks, but nothing close to the tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands that many had expected. This account is based on conversation with six people close to Gearbots, all speaking anonymously because they were not authorized to talk about what happened. Some said it was crushing news that has upended their financial plans for the future. Gearbots, based in Frisco, Texas, offers its employees below average salaries for the video game industry, according to more than a dozen current and former Gearbots staff who have spoken to Kotaku over the years. To make up for that, 
The studio offers something unique, profit sharing. Royalties from all of the developer's games are split 60-40, with 60% going back into the company and its owners, while 40% is distributed to employees in the form of quarterly bonuses. This system has been in place since Gearboss's inception, and when the company has big hits, it can be lucrative. When 2012's massive Borderlands 2 came out, many Gearboss workers made enough money to buy houses, a fact that the studio often touted while recruiting Dang. new employees. All right, so kind of uh, kind of an out of the norm business model there, but all right, kind of, kind of, I kind of see what it's going for. It worked once before. Why wouldn't it work again? Um, <laughs> yeah. Since then, however, Faith. Gearbox has been struggling, failing to find much financial success with flops like Aliens, Colonial Marines. And they did that. Yep. I, yeah. I, well, okay, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. And a Battleborn. As a result, oh, no. quarterly bonuses have been smaller in recent years. In 2020, that was supposed to change. Several <laughs> Gearbots employees told Kotaku that company management promised them six-figure bonuses following the launch of Borderlands 3. The more years they've been with the company, the larger the check. This vision of financial success helped Gearbots' developers get through many long nights and weekends working off the game. It's like the cherry on a stick that, you know, it's like being dangled in front of you as you're, like, running. And then, in a meeting yesterday, Gearbox boss Randy Pitchford told employees that Borderlands 3 bonus checks would be significantly lower than they had hoped, according to three people who were present. He said the game had been more expensive than expected, the company had grown significantly larger than it had been in the past, as it now has a second studio in Quebec, Canada, and that their sales projections had been off base. The game had sold very well. We expect lifetime unit sales to be a record for the series, said Strauss Zelnick, CEO of 2K parent company Take Two, on an earnings call in February, but it cost way too much to make. One large factor was a technology swap midway through development, from the UE3 to UE4. I, I should, uh, that's Unreal Engine 3 to 4, uh, which added a great deal of time to the project. In addition, before Gearbox to receive any royalties from publisher 2K, Borderlands 3 would have to recoup not just the game's entire budget of $95 million, but also the budget Damn. for all the DLC uh, content for a sum closer to $140 million, thanks to a contract that the two companies had signed. Pitchford also told Gearbox developers that if they weren't happy with the royalty system, they were welcome to quit. <laughs> 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 Point up or shut up. Oh, dear. That's terrible. Extreme. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. Nice. <laughs> the balls on that man. I love it. You know, I did. I didn't quite process that as I was reading it until after I had read it. I was like, oh wait, I didn't add any sort of gravity to that. But whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, he did not attribute the diminished bonuses to the coronavirus pandemic, which has led to economic uncertainty and pay cuts in many other fields. He did say that he hoped to get more money to employees as an advance from 2K on future royalties. When asked for comment, Gearbot sent over the following statement. Borderlands 3 represents incredible value to gamers, an incredible achievement by the team at Gearbot. Our studio is talent-led, and we believe strongly in everyone sharing profitability. Uh, do, 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 do. In the most recent pay period, Gearbot's talent enjoyed news that Borderlands 3, having earned revenue at seeding the largest investment ever made by the company, into a single video game and officially become a profitable video game and the talented gearbots that participates in the royalty bonus system has now earned their first royalty bonus from that profit okay last year former gearbots lawyer wade calendar uh just talked about the lawsuits and everything uh, we've covered that on the show before uh probably a year and a half or so ago i think uh so yeah um, nice Deal with it, or you're fired. Uh, Pretty good, much, yeah. Good, good plan. I mean, inherently, it's not a bad system. You know, the better we do, the better you do. It's not necessarily a bad system, but the way... <laughs> I'm not sure whether to blame... I feel like it's not really fair to blame Gearbots, necessarily. It's more of, like, a publisher deal sort of thing, right? Mm. Because Here's, it's possible. Here's the thing that's not exactly... Um, Clear? Don't know, yeah, yeah, like, they... 2K describes Borderlands mm -hmm. as a uh, as a billion dollar global brand. The yeah. issue is it does how much does it make? How much did it make initially? It, I'm getting the impression that it just around broke even. Borderlands. That's, yeah. yeah. It's, that's it's, yeah, it's because bad. you can't. Yeah, it's the hard thing of you can't describe it as you know a billion dollar global brand, mm -hmm. and because that leads people to say, hey, made, they made a billion dollars off of it. Then. No, okay. you have to think about the overall profits that it made, then contribute to how, how much they're getting. If it sure. didn't, because mm. they're saying it sold well, but we're not giving figures. 
-hmm. If we could say, oh, they made this much, then you, we could, you know, do some rough math and find out how much they were supposed to make. Okay. But, right. But is I that, think yeah. it's a little misleading in that article. Is okay. that broke even with regard to paying people as well, or...? <laughs> well, okay, so the way that it's basically going is that, like, so, yeah, people will have the salary and everything, but then it's just, like, um, so the way that I understood it reading the article there is, like, so Gearbox employees have this salary, right, which is admittedly sure. lower than what is par for the industry, right, and yeah. then um, that's made up for, and basically um, Gearbox splits um, splits the profit. So it's, like, um, once you... Um, once you go above like whatever the budget was for the game and everything it's like so it's like say you had like 40 million right say you make 50 million or 40 million to make a game say you make 50 million off that game um 60 of that goes to uh you know publishing and owners and everything mm -hmm. um at gearbox 2k and everything and then 40 percent of that uh goes to um would go to you know the Gearbox employees in the form of the uh, bonus checks that they were talking about throughout the article, and so this is this article uh, indicates that it's like Borderlands Three had such a really really high budget and everything that it's like it took a bit while longer for it to break even, sure. and uh, yeah, and once it did break even, uh, it's like the things past that weren't as high as they had been previously because uh, they were talking about how, oh, yeah, after Borderlands 2 success, people were buying houses and whatnot. It's like Borderlands 2 had a much, much smaller budget than yeah. Borderlands 3 did. That's true. But so. here's the thing. we like They describe it as a big sale success, but how much is a big sale success? Right. I think they were saying it sold the most copies out of any Borderlands. Okay. Um, so. Might they, be a related story. Yeah, they were out, like, I, I think Pitchford was out there, like, touting how much they've been selling mm. like on twitter about so it. then so, like how can they turn around and be like well we've we haven't um we haven't broken e broken even basically how can they well, they, they have it's just like the difference between the break even point and the profit like the uh the different and like how much they made is smaller this time around because yeah, well, that's that's a fact Accor well, according like to this venture beat they've yeah. sold Eight million copies, and that was in February. Okay. So, eight million copies, and they breaking even. Okay. Seems okay. like a bad. That doesn't management. seem right to me. But anyway, <laughs> bad. It seems like bad management if that is actually the case. And yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. It's just this, like I don't like this sucks for the the employer mm -hmm. the employees over a year box, but it's just like the article is such weirdly worded as well. Yeah, it's just I'm stuck. Like the game is sold very well. Then he quotes quotes uh, Strauss, Lennox, the CEO of 2K, saying, "We expect lifetime unit sales to be a record for the series." Okay. Oh. Don't say we expect if it's a big seller. What do you mean? Uh... Like, the game is sold very well. Then he quotes yeah. how they expect it to sell very well. They expect oh, it to okay. sell more is what he's saying. Yeah, it's just... They expect it to say even further. I just it's like I'm just it's weird. Wouldn't mm. you quote some numbers on how well it's sold so far, then? It's just a weird wording of the argument, in my opinion. Okay. I don't know. I don't, like, know, I don't know. I'm just fixed on that. Okay. It, it's not so much, like, for me, it's not so much the wording of what's going on. Um, it's more so, you know, they're like, I guess it is actually the wording, uh, because that's what you base it off. But, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got a headache, okay? Deal with it. <laughs> you know, we'll say everyone, everything in here made sense to me. I don't know. Okay, well, it's it's weird that they're like, hey, you know, this is one of the best-selling Borderlands games ever. Um, uh -huh. We expect to make a lot off it, but hey, we can't give you a bonus because it's barely breaking even. Like, that doesn't really make sense to me. Like, somebody's lying in the chain of command. Somewhere. Yeah. So, okay. okay. This in is interesting. Opinion, I, I think Matt might be right here because, like, I'm actually looking at number, trying to look up numbers. And like going back to last year, it's like there's an article called "Turns Out Borderlands 3 Sales Aren't Quite as Good as 2K Said They Were." Like, oh, yeah. okay, oh, a lot of like, sure. like, you see what I'm saying? Somebody's lying somewhere here because it's not accurate. Yeah, it seems sure, that sure. maybe they have just been kind of tooting their own horn when really. It, Wait, okay, hold on. I just reread the article where Randy Pitchford said if you didn't like it, like you didn't leave sort of thing. <laughs> um, he said their sales projections had been off base for Borderlands 3. Okay, then, yeah. 
Some okay, Matt, you had a point actually. Someone's somebody it's stuffed not accurate out somewhere. Yeah, someone's lying somewhere. You can't you know, someone's say not. that it's been a huge success and then you turn around and say, "Yeah, yeah. we got some our sales are inaccurate." Yeah, or our expectations were way above mark. Yeah, like has this sold more than Borderlands Two? I we, I don't know if we could find that out technically, yeah. but I don't know. Why why are they gonna spend forty five million dollars about half of the original game's budget on DLC development for this game? Yeah. That's wow. Yes. So the Borderlands two DLC I feel like was a big hit for them. Probably, yeah. Um and it looks like I've quick Google according to Wikipedia Borderlands mm -hmm. two sold like thirteen million copies. Oh, sure. oh okay. So how I don't many think it's beat Borderlands two yet? Oh sure. The one I looked up before was eight million, but like we said earlier, we have no idea if that's actually true. We actually we can base it off the quote here saying was it? Let me find that quote again. Uh, where is it? Let's just say no. Where they say we? Oh, there it is. We expect lifetime unit sales to be a record for the series. It hasn't met uh, Borderlands two yet. No. We, okay. Off that, we can base it. They have not met it. Okay, then logically, like, this whole, like, fiasco does kind of make sense then, right? So it's like, Borderlands 2, just, you know, that was sold for $60 also. You know, yeah. game prices really haven't changed the past uh, 10 years or so. Mm. Um, Surprisingly, but thank yeah. you, industry. Yes. <laughs> um, and so it's just, okay, so it's like, Borderlands 2 sold uh, 13 million copies or whatever, based on the best numbers we can gather right mm -hmm. um then it's just like um and then it had a much cheaper budget so it's just like all the extra stuff on top of breaking even past that budget would have been from you know the insane sales borderlands 2 was apparently cranking out by comparison mm -hmm. but then you have this much more expensive game than borderlands 2 that hasn't even met this based yeah, on the best sure. numbers we can find keep in mind what was it eight or nine million right mm -hmm. yeah. that hasn't even met borderlands 2 yet and had a bigger budget there's a lot less from the pool to take from so to speak you know so mm -hmm. And that's where the conflict is coming. Yeah. If you want to get Although, to be uh, to be fair, like the Randy Pritchford is not <laughs> not like, a reliable narrator. He right? is yeah. not yeah. handling this well at all. <laughs> if you don't like it, get out. I mean, like. <laughs> it's imagine being but in the Randy, meeting with the, where's the thumb drive? <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot who, whose tweet I saw. It was like, wow, like we'll really see if that PR meeting with Randy well like the next few days or not <laughs> yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah. good i feel like that's a trip to hr my next trick i'm gonna make my staff disappear yeah <laughs> oh God. dear okay. this is it's sad. amazing borderlands 3 even got produced you know reading about all the uh ass that stuff. goes on at gearbox yeah oh, it yeah. was the carrot on the stick that's all that's really what it was yeah that's why it got produced I also yeah. feel like Borderlands 3 is probably a couple of years too late. But... Definitely, yeah. They, yeah. I think they should have came out in around 2016 or so instead of Battleborn. Yeah, they know? should have just made Borderlands 3. Not when Battleborn. was 2 done? Yeah. 2013? Uh, 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah, it was in college. Oh, Lord, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not... They haven't made any word on numbers changing in terms of 60 40%. It's yeah, just yeah. that wasn't as big as they were hoping for. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, but when you're going, it's like a problem when you're going out, like, touting how much you're selling. Like, pitch for it. It's like, oh, it's the best selling, the fastest selling Borderlands 3. You're hyping up your whole, you know, staff. And then all of a sudden, be like, ah, oh, just kidding, guys. <laughs> I mean, you got to keep we're... morale high. It's like, well, the budget was actually a lot higher than we thought. Um, <laughs> and... Well, yeah, we, like, didn't crunch the numbers correctly. Like, what? Did we, why would you promise people that stuff if yeah. clearly, like... In yeah. some countries, that's illegal. I, I know, I probably would have modified, like, the pay structure, knowing that it's like, oh, the bonuses are going to be a lot less. We've been right. paying a little... After. Yeah, you know, sure. something like that. That would have been the smarter thing to do. necessarily wrong, it's just that they didn't no. calculate stuff right. In this particular situation, I'd say the system is probably not the you best. You know, I... It'd be... The system, like, the system works well, really well if you can make a look. really well-selling game on the cheap. Like Borderlands. Mm -hmm. Look. Yeah, like, like Borderlands too. The issue is you also have to make good games. Right. Like Battleborn yeah. and the other one, yeah. I forget his name. Call <laughs> Colonial Marines or whatever, yeah. Yeah, it's like they weren't... They're terrible. They weren't... Yeah, yeah. they were Garbage. terrible. And it's, it's like you need to make good games to make the system good. And mm -hmm. Gearbox can make good games. It's possible. Yeah, it's just... Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's just they didn't. <laughs> Look, they went to Fiverr. Okay, or Fiverr, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. 
They went to Fiverr. They posted that on Fiverr saying we need <laughs> some uh, we need some uh, bookkeeping staff, please. As a freelance <laughs> physician, can you please make up some random number? Thank you. Yeah. Post ad on Fiverr for a freelance job. <laughs> exactly. Do you think Randy Pitchford had the budget information on the USB stick also? And when he Probably. lost it, it was like... You know it. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I, too, keep accounting Look, information along with my hentai. He um, never... <laughs> okay, he never got the USB stick back. That's the crux no, of it. No, he did. He did. <laughs> That's what he says. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's true. Like, <laughs> huge budget with, oh dear. with uh, lower than expected sales doesn't equal huge bonuses. No, it does not. Yeah. Simple math. Yeah. I mean, it just, but like promise, the promises is what's the problem, right? Like promises. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. The yeah. carrot on the stick problem. Yeah. Here. Like getting, getting, making your workers like work when they yeah. like, you know, hard on this game. Like, okay, just, I got to get through it. And I can get this huge bonus or whatever when, like, yeah. they could have just I'm going to be so happy. I don't have to sleep yeah. on a desk anymore. I can buy a house, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, when they could have been looking for other work, like, that's not going to, like, kill them. Like, maybe, like, working yeah. on this game was. Yeah. Oh, so. The entire gaming industry is like that. Oh, I know. I know. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't know. The problem, it's like that problem gets countered by, oh, the salary is below industry average, too. That's also yeah, true. Yeah. Bonus, so, that yeah. There was... In this particular situation, I'm not sure there's like a positive way to frame what happened. No, it's not. It's horror. It sucks. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't suck for any pitcher. I guess. Uh, Most likely. Poor management skills. Yes. <laughs> Among <laughs> many other things. Yeah. <laughs> to just spend yeah. a day working with him in the office, like just uh, see how crazy it might be. It's like an undercover boss episode, but like somebody. <laughs> <laughs> <Accurate>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you totally so see understand. that like yeah. him just like oh he didn't even change his clothes though <laughs> <laughs> he's just hovering over some programmer the entire day just like what are you so, doing look <laughs> deal with it or you're fired uh, yeah yeah I. Uh, okay well oh dear all right well speaking of poor managerial uh skills uh we have criticized uh what was that, like last week? Uh, Naughty Dog, uh, maybe two weeks oh, ago. Yeah. Naughty Dog for, for possibly having some for the amount of uh, crunch that they've been having to do. And turns out it was all for not. Because, you know, crunch <laughs> is usually brought on by having to meet a set deadline. And this brings us to The Last of Us Part 2, the long-awaited Sweet Jesus. It's been like seven the years. Electric boogaloo. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been like seven years since Last of Us Part 1. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, it's like they set themselves a deadline. Finally, they're like, okay, we're sticking to it this time, guys, we swear. Crunch time ensued, as we talked about uh, last week or so. And now, this story coming to us on April 2nd, The Last of Us Part 2 has been delayed indefinitely due to COVID-19. This, so, uh, this is not an April Fool's joke, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so this article is coming from The Verge. Um, as Taylor said, the last is part two delayed indefinitely due to novel coronavirus or novel coronavirus, however it's pronounced. Sony COVID-19. announced COVID nineteen. Yet yeah, Sony announced on Thursday that it has delayed Naughty Dog's The Last of Us Part Two until further notice because of the <laughs> COVID nineteen pandemic. The game has been previously scheduled to launch on May the twenty ninth. Logistically, the global crisis is preventing us from providing the launch experience our players deserve, Sony said in a statement. Sony has also delayed Iron Man VR. Damn it! And then this, <laughs> this tweet... That's the real one, right? I know, right? That's um, the true tragedy of this generation. Exactly. Uh, this is a tweet coming from play at PlayStation, which is obviously the official PlayStation account. Update, SIE has made the difficult decision to delay the launch of The Last of Us Part 2 and Marvel's Iron Man VR until further notice. Logistically, the global crisis is preventing us from providing the launch experience our players deserve. We were faced with the reality that due to the logistics beyond our control, we couldn't launch The Last of Us Part 2 to our satisfaction. Naughty Dog said about the delay in the statement. We want to make sure everyone gets to play The Last of Us Part 2 around the same time, ensuring that we're doing everything possible to preserve the best experience for everyone. This means delaying the game until such a time where we can solve these logistic issues. We're hoping that this won't be a long delay, and we'll update you as soon as we have new information to share. Sure. 
Uh, I'll just double check this statement that it's the same thing. Twitter, please load. No. Nah. Okay, wait a second. As you've nope, liked... Okay. okay, this is like some more stuff. As you've likely just seen the release of the last of part two has been delayed, we're sure this news is just as disappointing to you as it is to us. We wanted to reach out to all of you in our community to give you a little more information. The good news is we're nearly done with development of The Last of Us Part 2. We're in the midst of fixing some final bugs. However, even with us finishing the game, we were faced with the reality that due to logistics out of our control, we couldn't launch The Last of Us Part 2 to our satisfaction. Blah, 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 that's what I just read. And then following up, we were bummed about this decision, but ultimately understood it's what's best and fair to all our players. We're hoping that this won't be a long delay and we'll update you as soon as we have new information to share. We wish you all, your families and your friends, the best of help. Thank you for being amazing fans and your continued support. Stay safe, naughty dog. Um, obviously, this isn't the first delay for The Last of Us. It was originally... It was delayed from a February 21st release to a May 29th release. Uh, delay? What am I saying? Not delete, delay, I mean. I'm, I'm saying de delay and release in one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's one uh, So the last is part two on Iron Man VR. Aren't the first major titles to be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? Square Enix said on Monday that it would be shipping copies of Final Fantasy VII Remake earlier than usual to Europe and Australia. We got it like 10 days early. Mm. Um, and this week to other Western regions in an effort to get the game to players in time for its April 10th release date. It seems <coughs> likely other game releases could be affected by the pan pandemic as well. Um, yeah, so what do we think about... I guess the first question would be, do we think other games are going to get delayed due to COVID-19? Um, do we think this is like a unique situation for Naughty Dog, or what are our thoughts with this? I'm gonna. St I'll start with like the like the the Last of Us. I was like kind of bummed at first. I was like, oh no, like delayed again. That's kind of a bummer. But then I was like, right. I don't know if I need a game about like society murdering <laughs> yeah, each other true. in this a, day and age. A right pandemic now. ruining the world in a pandemic that's ruining a world. Yeah. What, so, what's wrong? Oh, the the Last of Us. I I, I was, I'm okay with the delay because I don't know if I need that kind of narrative oh. in my life right now yeah i was gonna i was gonna bring you up uh because this came to me as i just went to the bathroom there uh do we think uh it's just like realistically you know sony just didn't feel so okay this is kind of a japanese-ish thing right uh there's this uh and it's the best example is um the best example is there's this anime out there called uh, fire force okay is it was originally scheduled to um launch uh i think in it was like summer of uh, 2019 is when it came out or so. And um, that was, it was really scheduled to launch like a day after Kyoto Animation had the uh, fire oh. arson attack. Oh, and, no. you know, Fire Force, the anime deals with uh, kind of like paranormal firefighters sort of thing sure. is the best way of describing it. And they delayed the release by like a month or so because of the whole arson fire attack and it had been in bad taste. So right. do you think uh, maybe Sony was like, yeah, you know, maybe releasing something where, where the world is kind of garbage because of a like plague or you know an infection, maybe not the best thing right now. I think that's part of it. Yeah, okay. I believe it. This was. Um... I love this. Uh, I love this tweet that I saw about it. We now live in a world where the only future release that is definite won't be de uh, that definitely won't be delayed is the Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> that is weird. Yeah. Um, we actually... Cause like I don't know the stuff for that Naughty Dog. I said I don't know if you went over it, but it was like um, it was like they said the game's finished, right? They're just yeah, like so they're, working. Yeah, they're doing yeah. bug fixes and whatever. Um, a few bugs, and I think it also comes down to like this is me. That's hopefully be like one of the most polished games ever. It better be. I feel or like, like the, uh, shipping stuff, like the physical copies. I think. Yeah. So I oh, feel like okay, the maybe. reason reason why this has been delayed is because for one amazon has cut like all non-essential you know shipments to people sure. and a lot of people would probably be buying this off amazon and like other online realtors uh re retailers not realtors um obviously GameSpot is also shut down as well a lot of like gaming places in the uk as well have shut down so i feel like a lot of people wouldn't be able to get this on day one so that could be a reason for it um we did also discuss 
like in an article on our site uh, about you know the uh, the Nintendo Mini Direct thing that they did and the little like paragraph that they had at the start saying due to COVID nineteen some stuff may be delayed. There is an article on our site that actually went through this saying that the last of us will probably get delayed and funnily enough it got delayed. <laughs> so um called it. Yeah, called it, exactly. So I feel like it's due to not being able to get it to people. The game's finished, but I don't reckon they're gonna be able to get it to people on day one and that's the issue that they've got. Okay. Mm. <laughs> is is anyone like add a uh, is anyone seriously bummed about this here? No. Okay. No, I mean, like, was, yeah, like I said. This was honestly just like, I know there is a huge fan base out for it, and it's like, by for all accounts and everything, it'll probably be a good game once it does finally release. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's like, this was fairly low on my priorities radar. Just, you know, just <laughs> not, not super, not super into it. Um, I mean, the first... I, mean, I really like that first game. Yeah, the first game mm -hmm. was brilliant. Um, Even the yeah. multiplayer in that game, I liked a lot. Yeah, yeah it was surprisingly okay. good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's like one of the few multiplayers where crafting element is actually very well integrated. Into yeah. The multiplayer setting. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know. I want to play this, but I'm not hyped for this. If that makes sense. Like if this came out, I'd probably pick it up straight away. But I'm not overly hyped. I don't really care that it's been delayed. It's it's like a weird game to get hyped for because it's so dark and like. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I'm ready yeah, to jump back in that world where everyone I mean, you get killing uh, each other and like, <laughs> every, nothing is happy. Uh, so it's, it's a weird. You could say the same about Doom, but I was hyped as hell for that game. Well, Doom is like yeah. silly though. Like, I'm just gonna run around and murder demons. Right, yeah. Doom's yeah. great. Like, Fair Doom enough. is. Doom is hypable because it's just full on. But then, like, Last of Us is just kind of suffering, you know? Yeah. Yes. I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially, like, it looks even darker than the first one. Yeah. So. There was, yeah. um, this is also kind of related. There was, I think it was from the Naughty Dog, like, CEO or whatever it's called, lead developer or whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. Um, he was saying, talking about the Last of Us TV show that they're doing and also the Uncharted movie. And he's like, I don't really care for the Uncharted movie, to be honest. Um, bring on the Last of Us TV show. So it seems like Naughty Dog <laughs> isn't too keen for Uncharted at all. <laughs> it's hard to... I mean, all the, like, directing issues that movie has had, it's yeah. kind of hard to blame them. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's probably not even in their control at all. So yeah. Like, okay, whatever. Like, they're going to take our games that are basically movies and make it a movie. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. So. Okay. That was just a fun right. thing, that's all. Yeah, so, well, Last of Us Part 2 delayed yet again. Hopefully that game eventually releases. What's the over on, under on seeing it before the next-gen consoles? Oh, well, well, we don't even know if those will get delayed or not either. They will. I reckon they will. I, I don't think they will. I mean, I, like, I this, really don't think they will. At this point, they're just in the manufacturing phase by, by now, right? Like, yeah. Okay, so, so that's yeah, mostly yeah. automated. I'm not yeah. saying that they're gonna the get only delayed. Thing most likely transported, like is transport issues. I'm yeah, so I'm not saying they're gonna get delayed because they can't be made, mm -hmm. or like because they can't be developed. I'm saying they may not be able to be assembled because of some factory shutting down, um, and they may not be able to be shipped because of yeah. shipment issues. I imagine the shipping is the biggest logistical yeah. hurdle right now. So okay. it's probably a logistics reason being they may get delayed. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well, we have some time to figure that out then. Or for, you know, then figure it out and whatnot. And for us to figure out if they'll actually come out this year. So, <laughs> at the end stay of... tuned, right? Everything's yeah. trying to dynamic right now. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, uh, and then, uh, well, let's talk about Battlefield dice just in a bad space yeah, this also is, right this, this, <laughs> what this, the hell is this this is just a funny article that i saw um so a couple of weeks ago modern warfare had like a double xp weekend slash week thing um mm -hmm. to try and encourage people to play because of coronavirus i think that had part something to do with it um yeah. so and a lot of people were asking well what what the hell is battlefield doing uh, we haven't seen any double xp thing from them um, so this is coming from MP first, multiplayer first. Uh, Dice tech isn't there to support Battlefield Five double XP. <laughs> Those ones. There was, there was double XP in Battlefield Four and Battlefield One though, <laughs> and in Three, and in Hardline. Those what? 
Those wondering why DICE hasn't flipped the switch on some sweet Battlefield 5 double XP goodness now that a lot of people are stuck at home, it seems it's a tech issue and not just the studio not wanting to do it. This was revealed by DICE community manager Def Jeff Braddock over on the Battlefield 5 subreddit where a fan asked exactly that and why there are no community events happening as of the moment at all. So I'll read from this thread. This is actually quite funny. Seriously, though, this is coming from uh, Beta1548, a guy off Reddit. Seriously, though, no double XP, no community events, nothing. While everybody is locked down at home, you guys aren't doing anything. Uh, then somebody else commented, they are doing plenty. I'm annoyed there's nothing in the near future, but they've already stated that uh, they'd rather have a large bug-proof content drop in May than a small one in April and a small one in May. I trust they're working on something right now. Uh, so then the other guy commented, I'm talking more about the lack of any sort of event or anything to get people to log on while they're stuck at home. Yeah. And this is coming from the community manager at DICE. The team is working on it. We had something planned for last week, but after testing the user flow, it didn't work correctly, meaning you couldn't tell if you got the thing or not. <laughs> There's talks going on about more playlists, login rewards, but we want it to work. As soon as it's locked, tested, and tested again, and ready to roll, we'll let you know. I definitely understand what you mean, and totally agree. Re, 2 XP, it just doesn't work for Battlefield 5. Even though we had it for the last four <laughs> Battlefield... Wait, even though we had it for the last four Battlefield games? <laughs> they admit it. They admit it. If that changes, I'm one of the first folks to say, let's have some crazy XP boost. I mean, we do have 500 ranks, right? Um, oh my gosh. When you say it doesn't work for Battlefield 5, what do you mean specifically? Like the technology isn't there to make it work on that, d or that DICE doesn't want it to work that way? So then the community manager again. From what I've been told, the tech isn't there for it. They're looking at options, but I don't have any further details. <laughs> Oh god, it's the classic, the tech isn't there yet, it's Deuce. I know, right? Oh my god. Oh it's man. It just doesn't exist. The when Blizzard fanboy to me is beyond triggered right now. Somebody else. Um, uh, that's uh, really perplexing. <laughs> what is it about Battlefield Five construction that makes logistic, uh, long-standing features of the franchise so faulty and problematic? Uh, isn't there a dedicated Frostbite team that should be able to help tackle these issues? Ribbons, detailed end of round stats, XP events, unlocking unlocking items, team balance, I'm sure there's more. Nah, it's just one dude, you know. It's a dude yeah. in a closet with a <laughs> Windows yeah. 98 computer. I feel like yeah, so, just so, uh, make clear what he was referencing there. Uh, DICE has an in-house, like, just Frostbite technical team that's purely yeah. dedicated to work on the engine. Uh, this job brought up uh, when we were talking about some of Anthem's technical woes and that whole thing was kind of blowing up. Um, I don't know if uh, that team is still around anymore, but that could be what the uh, commenter That's is referring to. Yeah. Um, and then the article I'm reading from just goes on to say that they have stuff planned, blah, 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 and then quotes what I've already read. Um, this sounds like a stadier hey. approach, to be honest. Hey, Taylor. <laughs> yeah. How many characters do you need to edit in the line of code for XP to make it two times? I mean, you, I <laughs> like was going to say, it's just, like, just have some intern write a script that doubles your numbers everywhere. And then... no, you don't double the numbers everywhere, or you'll break some stuff. I know. But I mean, I don't know, just like... It's pretty easy to do. I can imagine... singular line of, like, that, that ending code of value equals whatever. Yeah. What do you need to do to that value... Change the one to a two. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Change the one to a two, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, this is like, if this is actually the case and not just some, part of me kind of feels like this could have been lost in translation between engineering and community but also, um, I don't know, how screwy must your database could, be? Okay, wait. You can do a strip that doubles all the... Couldn't yeah. you just go to Battlefield 1? Okay. Open up the console for all the code in that. Copy the little XP. No, no you can't. The little XP thing. No, it's a it's a different Frostbite iteration. Oh, sure. That's the problem. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sure there's just a switch, the double XP switch. They can just 
Like, oh, I got a little sure. button like, under the... <laughs> Oh. That's, they yeah, can't that's how, find a switch. That's how Call of Duty works, I'm pretty sure. I don't understand why they couldn't tack on a system either. That's like just based on a, a trigger. You know, it's just like so that when the trigger is active, it's just like it doubles everything. Wait, how old is that game? 2017? I think, yeah. What? No, and they, 2018. Nine, 2018. They never had double XP for the whole 2018. Two years. And they never had double XP. Wow. <laughs> Bad game. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why no one really plays that game anymore, right? Yeah. Right. There's a reason uh, why people still Battle... play Battlefield 4 over Battlefield 5. Like, outside of Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1 is definitely the best, like, most recent Battlefield. Yeah. Battlefield 1, in my opinion. Battlefield 5 in World War 2? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Battlefield you know, we just World now War. got Pacific content, like, Pacific Front yeah, content. Yeah, I Battlefield remember 5. seeing that. Yeah. Now, that game missed on so many marks. It did. Wow. What you do is you just buy this game in like five years time, when it's like ten bucks, or you can get it, or it's on like Origin Access for like, or the sure. basic Origin Access for free. I think it already is on Origin Access, right? I think so, yeah. Oh gosh. Yikes! Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yikes. The main like on the the main issue that I've heard, just I you know I occasionally peep the. Uh, Autofocus, thank you. The um, Battlefield 5 community. And it's like the main issue I've heard is um, the time to kill has been really, really wonky sure. on stuff. So It's normally really short, yeah? Yeah, but apparently in 5, it's really, really high. Oh, okay. So it's like it takes forever hmm. to kill a guy. You know, you're just like pumping him to the lead before he hmm. goes down. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. I don't know. I'd, I enjoyed Battlefield 1, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I played it originally on Xbox One, quite enjoyed it there, and then tried to play it on PC. I didn't, like, go back to it, so I found okay. it boring, um, because there's better stuff to play, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, they've, they missed out so much. Hopefully, like, for Battlefield 6, or whatever the heck we're going to call it, um, Vincey old chap is going to be uh, running, like, dice. Yeah. But that's Vince Zampella. By the way, the guy yeah. who does um, uh, Daddy Vince. Respawn, Respawn. Respawn <laughs> Apex, all that kind of stuff. Um, so he's taking over, like he's, he's gonna be making a good game. He's leading dice at least now, right? Or co-leading. Yeah, we talked about that story on the podcast a few weeks ago, I think. Correct. Yes. So hopefully, fingers crossed, Battlefield gets good again. Hopefully, make yeah. Battlefield great again. Exactly. Um, no, okay. Well, let's talk about other bad FPSs. Matt, uh, <laughs> take it away. Wow. Oh, wow. You okay. So, I won't call it a bad <laughs> FPS just yet, because I have not <laughs> put my hands on it. But, I will, I will say my expectations are below six feet of the ground. Okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what game are we talking about, first of all? It's about uh, Valorant. Valorant. Yeah. Valorant. Valorant. Is it Valorant or Valorant? It should be. It's. It's Valorant. not going to be relevant in three years from now. So why does it matter? Okay, sure. so just a bit of a <laughs> okay. bit of a thing. So Valorant is the new title that Riot is working on. Yes, and originally mm. known as Project A, Valorant is Riot's games a new competitive free-to-play FPS. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, which is supposed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And Overwatch-ish. <laughs> Yeah, so and it, it's supposed to be a blend somewhere in between basically every single uh, FPS that we have right now that's relevant between Overwatch, Counter-Strike, and uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's supposed to be a, a system most similar to Counter-Strike in that you have an economy to work with where, you, you know, you get rewarded off wins, kills, and losses, stuff like that. But it also has, I guess... Heroes, operators, I don't know what they call them, but they have people in there which have special abilities or gadgets that allow you to affect the gameplay in some sort of way. Sure. The issue that I all have with this is if if you're competing with Counter Strike, you can't do heroes. Right. Just straight then, up. Because then you have a couple of factors that you're working with Counter Strike, balance, and uh, another factor I'm forgetting off the top of my head, and uh, skill ceiling. They're all kind of affected by which hero you choose and stuff like that. Sure, the, one, sure. the one thing about Counter Strike that's very unique is it pretty much has an unlimited skill ceiling. The difference between, say, a level, uh, player at my level uh, and Taylor's level compared to a professional is 
astounding. Like yeah. we like the, you could, it's it's amazing the difference. Legit insane. Yeah. Legit, yeah. Yeah, and there's also other factors as well, such as risk versus reward. In Counter Strike, you the way you gather info, yeah, you have to risk something, whether it's utility, life, or something. From some of the gameplay that I've seen in Valorant, you do not have that as much of a factor. You can gather sure. intel rather easily. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just... Yeah. Like, because, you know, um, Andrew, you're a big, you know, competitive fighting game guy. Like, what makes a good competitive fighting game for you? Oh, God. I, I don't know. That's a great question, honestly. Um, not if it's netcode, I'll tell you that much. So speaking uh, of netcode, uh, Ryan <laughs> is saying that the primary differentiating, fa uh, differentiating factor between Valorant and the other Dread competition, which, as mentioned, is Overwatch, CSGO, right. and Rainbow <laughs> Six, um, it says like it's going to have like it's going to be technically better than all of them. So it's going to run better than all of them. It's going to have Ooh. better netcode than all of them. It's going to have a higher server tick than all of them. So the server tick is an easy one to accomplish. I heard they're having 128 tick servers, which is Fair. Uh, to give an example, Counter Strike has 64. I and think that's too Rainbow low for Counter Strike. Yeah, I think Rainbow Six has 60, if I remember correctly. 30. 30. Dang. Yeah. I remember Overwatch has somewhere 24. Yeah. Dang. Those, those games are all kind of old by now, so I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean that's something be better that than those. Games. You don't really need to modify the game itself for. You need to change uh, yeah. what it's, it's a running off. Great is, is yeah. the extent of it really. In some cases, like CSGO, it's actually just rewriting some code and it works, actually. Yeah. Because they already have the infrastructure there, technically, but they just choose not to. So, okay, you're probably going to get to this, but how, like, I don't understand how you can compete with Siege, Overwatch, and CSGO. They're all different games. Like, right. what? Yeah. It's, it's taking a little bit. Well, I've watched a it's, little bit of it. It's not they're necessarily competing with them. It's just yeah. that they're taking elements from each of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, They're competing sure. with it in the sense of that it's like, oh, this is another competitive FPS in the same vein as Overwatch, Siege, and CS:GO. Yeah. With, like, with like some of their mechanics in it, like the yeah, buying, yeah. like the buying system from Counter Strike, yeah. shooting through walls, like in Siege, yeah. um, sure, and then like sure, the sure, abilities sure. in Overwatch. Yeah. Sure. I liken yeah. it to like imagine the world of competitive FPSs is like a hand or whatever, right? So it's like you have your thumb is like Call of Duty, you know. <laughs> and then still kind of in the same space, but, you know, it's its own thing. Uh, your index finger is, like, CSGO, you know, stuff like that. And now yeah. it's, like, there's another finger being added for uh, Valorant. Mm -hmm. Makes um, sense. Yeah, so it's, I'll admit, I haven't played the game yet. It's just my my expectations are extremely low just off the game plan that I see. Mm. As someone who like, watches Twitch a good amount, like, I've seen uh, CSGO being played a lot recently because of, uh -huh. like, Valorant, right? So I'm like, man... It's so slow. And then, like, Valorant came out, and I'm like, oh, it's got that same slow feeling to it. It's got... It's... it's I mean, that I don't depends know. on the game that the average to play. I mean, CSGO's yes. movement system is one of the most unnecessarily simple yet complex to deal with. Sure. In, in yeah. video games, just because of Source it Engine. and acceleration. That's the yeah, thing. Source Engine is such a weird uh, fact, like, weird engine. Mm -hmm. um, but Valorant, it... Just the general movement seems slower on average compared to CSGO as well. Sure. Yeah, it just looks... Obviously, it's not done, but, like, there's yeah, a lot, I mean, you know... It's so one it's... of those things you have to get hands-on to really take a look. It's just off the bat, I'm not I'm not very impressed with it. Yeah. The, trying, I know that, like, in competitive FPS, graphics are not really much of a issue and everything, mm -hmm. but, yeah. like, I, the game looks cosmetically bad. Like It looks like I, a Riot game. Yeah, I it, it caused well. League of Legends doesn't look that bad, but I mean, I this game that. just there's something. It's like I don't know how to describe it. It's very. I, I like I said, I know it's early, but like I was like watching them when the died. I was like, oh, that looks like that's a bad death animation. That hand animation, though. Like, yeah, I was like, that's uh, bad. <laughs> but again, that'll probably change. But hopefully, mm. yeah. It's just, dude. I'm just not very pleased with the idea of it so far. Like, I just don't. Like if the, one of the reasons why also Counter Strike works very well in terms of a a a competitive game is there's two factors that kind of go into it. Uh, one, it's a super easy game to watch and understand kind of what's going on, and when you see a nutty play, it's easy to understand it's a nutty play. And two, it's just the the community behind it doesn't like 
necessarily want to go pro necessarily it's just that they want to win the community is driven by the competitiveness of the sure. of the game itself yeah um like <laughs> one of the best quotes i've seen is uh, a fortnite streamer was talking about csgo and why he loves the csgo fan base is because if he's in a matchmaking game where he's smurfing and not taking it seriously he still has a guy trying to coach him on how to do stuff and like try to get them to win because he just loves the game that much and he wants to win that hard Sure. And that's yeah, what sure. some other games like Fort, like Fortnite and other FPSs are lacking. Overwatch, stuff like that. Sure, sure. Rainbow Six is but the second, like one of the closest we've had so far to you know reaching the same level as CS:GO. But it's still yeah. got even after yeah. five years, still got some ways to go. Yeah, yeah. Like Siege is so I don't know. It's like unique. Nobody does anything really like it. Um, yeah, Siege is a beast in itself its own can of worms right yeah, yeah. and it's has... i'm surprised by how strong the uh the competitive community that is yeah the yeah. pro scene as well yeah yeah i don't know i haven't okay. seen any like valorant gameplay or valorant mm -hmm. um gameplay i have seen a couple of like trailers or like I gameplay one things of the, one of the videos was like yeah it's like you know all the abilities that the operate i'm calling them operators because it's easier uh, all the operators have is be, like you know it doesn't necessarily infect a gameplay that massive it more aids to the shooting aspect of it sure. then he then he literally demonstrates how you could one character can teleport anywhere on the map and how another character can cheat death and kill people at the same time yeah that's pretty dumb uh. i'm like what do you mean it doesn't impact like the round of, like it's just dumb you're called mm. agents by the way agents. Oh, okay. okay agents good to know it's Agent like, Forty Seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I watched. Yeah. Like I said, I watched a little bit of it. It's it's definitely got a very like they're really going after that CS:GO vibe. So yeah, yeah. it will be interesting to see how that community takes I'm it. I'm not impressed with it so far. Yeah. How like when's it supposed to release? No Summer, idea. I think. But the beta. It says I read it's like Q two or three from what I heard. Mm, okay. Um, okay. But uh, the beta starts April seventh. Okay, a couple so days. It's a closed week. beta. Closed beta. Yeah. Closed beta? Okay. Sure. All right, yeah. do you guys know if you got into it, or is it just for... Okay. Did anybody I apply for it? us into it? <laughs> I didn't even apply to it. I'll that. see. I might be able to. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is PC it's... only, or...? Hopefully. Uh, it don't... looks like a PC only game, actually. It looks like PC initially, that's what I... Think. Good. Just uh. because of how, like, the... You can ADS a little bit in that game, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So... But uh, it's yeah. So maybe you know, in a week from now, if when or whenever I get back on the podcast, I'll have some comments about it and some opinions at that sure. point. But okay, we'll see. All right. Nice. So um, moving on from the realm of bad FPSs, uh, let's talk about IGN. Um, actually, I'm gonna get sued for slander if I say that, so I'm not gonna say that. So uh, anyway, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, we got some interesting stuff here. Um kind of lump these two i got two here lump them together but uh with e3 being canceled and everything mm -hmm. um due to the whole thing going on ign is doing something interesting i guess they're calling it their summer gaming event nice. uh, and i've gone straight to the source around ign.com a digital event set to begin this june to bring you the latest news impressions and around upcoming games of the next generation of console hardware uh, they're going to say they're collaborating with like a bunch of publishers, 2K, Square Enix, Sega, you know, a bunch of them. Um, so it's just super weird that like, I mean, I'm super smart, I think, as well, too. IGN, it, they even say here that it covers 112 countries, 25 languages, and they're going to be like putting out all this live programming on like, oh, you know, okay. anything you can get your hands on, apparently Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Mixer, Twitch. God, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's... uh. TikTok's the most so, important. Total yeah, media blast. Yeah, right, Total right? media blast. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of information on it. Uh, we do have a uh, article up on our site about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It's it's. I guess it's it's interesting, right? Like, you know, I didn't expect IGN to be the one to jump on the absence of E3. Right. Um, of all things, right? Yeah. You know, we we figured the publishers were going to come and do it themselves. Mm -hmm. um was not yeah. ready I, but i guess it makes sense like publishers can like all right 
you, can you handle this for us? I mean, right, yeah. So I guess yeah. you know that points out the thing where it's like it still is beneficial to have a third party mediary between yeah. developers oh, yeah. and so. uh, consumers. It's... No, Tokyo Game Show is third party as well, right? Uh, technically, yes. Yeah. yeah. There's like some. There's like the Japanese equivalent of the ESA that runs it. So basically, Japanese E3. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> It's more yeah. so uh, like, Japanese Gamescom, I would say, than anything yeah. else. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, it's, yeah, in terms of gaming, it's always nice having a third party host something. Right. I mean, um, hmm. if you think about it logically, um, so IGN has the, I mean, any, like, larger media outlet, no matter what kind of, you know, what genre it's in whether it's like real world news or gaming news or movie news or whatever they have the ability to like stream to their audience they have all the capture equipment they have all the cameras sure. they've got everything ign is the biggest well, or yeah. one if not the biggest one of the biggest gaming outlets there is they cover other stuff as well so i oh, kind yeah. of they're definitely like top three in terms of yeah yeah gaming coverage and news people yeah, and so really quick the tokyo the game show is presented by the Computer Entertainment Suppliers Association, sure. uh, which was established in 1996 in uh, Japan to promote the computer entertainment industry. With the CES. The strengthening of Japan in <laughs> Japanese industry, as well as to the further enrichment of people's lifestyles. It organized the annual Tokyo Game Show and Japan Game Awards. And then uh, hmm. the guy, uh, the president of Sega Holdings, also runs uh, CESA here. Um, and then it's also the Tokyo Game Show is also brought on by the Nikkei Business Publications, uh, and which is essentially Japanese Forbes. Sure. Okay, anyway, interesting. So, Good to know. Yeah. Anyway, and fact. I kind of feel like IGN has, let's just say, worked with some larger publishers. Um, yeah. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I see but, what you're going for. Okay. I'm not going to say anything, but uh, but I kind of feel like that might be why they're doing it as well, because they IGN has existing business relations with Correct. certain publishers that would make them easier to do this than say like Gamespot or something. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Whether that is in <laughs> I... a monetary fashion or not, I'm not too sure. Publishers could very well be paying IGN to you know showcase their stuff for this type of thing, like the summer of games thing. So. Yeah. I like I don't as I said I don't know if they're getting paid to do this or not. Um, yeah. And yeah, as I said, they've got existing relationships. Take that however you want. Uh, with some developers, so yeah, IGN is the natural choice to do something like this, and I feel like this is needed. To be honest, like we need to start get because otherwise the year in gaming is going to die with coronavirus going around and stuff getting delayed and you know resource management going to hell. Um, we need like an E3 slash online event kind of thing happening in IGN's filled the gap, which is good to see. Yeah. Definitely. And you know what? I don't, you know, say what you will about IGN and everything, but in the gaming media space, they are still the largest name and yeah, brand 100%. out there. So, hands 100%. down, like, we yeah. can't argue that. Yeah. <laughs> I love so. the, this little uh, comment. E3 gets candled. IGN, fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> Accurate, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, with all the, uh, like, travel costs they probably saved on uh, sending their guys, not sending their guys to E3 this year. They probably do Does this, that mean right? we got something to go to, Taylor? No, God, I'm not going to LA. I forget. I mean, they Where could... Are they hosting how do you think... So when does... Okay, so for one... Andrew's gone now, but whatever. Uh, for one, right. when does this start? I closed down the article. Let me check. Well uh, done. Thank you. I my bad. Autoplay uh, video? Why? Hey, you're not hosting at least. Uh, it's still annoying. Plan to kick off in early June. Yeah. So oh, around wow. E3 time. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Times don't say middle year is not a good time for this type of thing. Um, they could very well do this like a Nintendo Direct. Like with like every, Nintendo Direct style, like a five-day event, because to get all those publishers and developers and whatever on board, you're uh -huh. gonna this is gonna need to go for quite some time. And then if they do it like a direct style thing, then they can replay them throughout the year, like replay the event coverage throughout the year or whatever. They don't have to do it physically, at least. You know, like developers can send them trailers, they can send them yeah. 
stuff like that. And they've just got to collate it into one big no, video. And bang. I want IG in Latin America. <laughs> You're in Mexico, is that why? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have my VPN up now because it won't have the speed to go through anyway. I'm trying to figure out who owns um, who owns IGN. It is uh, a subsidiary of Ziff Davis. Uh, it's an American publisher and internet company. Um, let's see, yeah. Pretty much it. It looks like uh, they do. Yeah, they do things like popular aviation back in the day. Interesting. Uh, let's see, current properties, Mashable, Black Friday, Best Black Friday, Extreme Tech, Geek.com, Humble Bundle, Offers, PC Magazine, Humble Google Plus, the, speed, the Speedtest.net, guys, uh, Tech Bargains, Toolbots.com, eMedia, Ziff Davis Tech, Ziff Davis B2B, Speedtest.net. Nice. Askman.com and Game Trailers are now part of the IG network. Let's see. They used to own Electronic Gaming Monthly, and that's pretty much the only relevant one. Uh, let's see, they used to run 1up.com, A Plus Magazine, Computer Gaming World, Creative Computing, all, man, all like the 90s and 2000s history yeah. of like computer magazines went through these guys. That's it's, insane. It's like IGN's the only one to survive <laughs> yeah. for that long. Yeah, really. Because I mean, they were pretty much always like digital from the get go, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, they were. They never really had a print space, so no, that transition that... never hurt them. They never, uh, they never um, had like a magazine or anything like that. Um, yeah. Some magazines are shutting down now, so it's interesting. Right. You could yeah. more website. Hell yeah. Really. Um. Okay. So, what? You, let's see. What? What's this second article that Andrew put in there while he's gone? Probably announces uh, dates for reimagined E3. Oh, okay, so this is related to E3, but this is out of the realm of IGN, but this article is from IGN themselves. Mm. Um, ESA reportedly announces dates for reimagined E3 in 2021. Oh, no. The, e the ESA has formally announced dates for reimagined E3 in 2021, following the cancellation of E3 2020 and, oh, no. and IGN's own announcement of its Summer of Gaming event. E3 2021 will be held from June 15th to oh, June why? 17th. 2021. According to GamesIndustry.biz, the ESA sent out the news to industry partners late Friday. E3 2020 was officially cancelled on March 11th due to concerns over the COVID-19 virus. Okay. Why? Why can't... It... You've got a year off. Okay. Why don't you change the date? They're setting a deadline for themselves. But change the date. Make it early in oh, the year yeah, or yeah, the I end of the year. Yeah. Like, it's a stupid I, I, time. I, I... I don't know. The beginning of the year might be too crowded. The end Are of the they year. Bring back the booth. <laughs> Please bring back the booth, babes. That needs to be further reimagining. Oh, gosh. I want the Bayonetta cosplayers guiding me through the Bayonetta Ford. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So, you know how we were talking uh, when E3 got cancelled? Uh, due to, you know, that thing that was going around? How, you know, I wonder if this will be the nail in the coffin for it. Well, Evidently not. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> Already. Evidently not. Um. I wish, like, I, I don't know, like, I wish E3 would just die and then be replaced. Sure. Like, not die, die, but, like, die, die, and then be replaced. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? What, what do you mean? I don't... I'm flipping that. I want him to die, die. Um, but, like... You want him to, like... Okay, so I want, I want them, them... Not to die, die, but I want them to die, die. <laughs> exactly. So that's perfectly said. Uh, so basically, to die, to come up, come back, and to be better, like to reimagine to themselves, resurrect. reimagine themselves completely, be something unique, get out of this crap influencer space. You you want them to resurrect themselves, pretty much. Well, True okay. Facts. So to be fair, we don't know how. E3 2021 will look like. They did say it will be reimagined. So, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily right to expect that, you know, E3 2021 will mirror the experience we had at E3 2019. Hopefully. Go back so, to B2B, please. Hey, Taylor, if they please. moved it to Las Vegas, would you go to it? A hundred percent, yes. Any excuse I can get for a trip to Vegas is a good one. Are you a Vegas fan? Yes, I like, okay. uh, even like, even like, I haven't been there to gamble yet since I've turned 21. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't been there to drink yet since Wait. I've turned 21 either. But like, even just like going to CES. The next CES years, trip. Everything <laughs> was really fun. Yeah. So. 
Uh, yeah, I wonder if they'll have CES this year or next year. Oh, yeah. uh, they probably will. I'd imagine. CES I feel like will happen. Yeah, sure. things are going to clear up sooner rather than later. So, look, if they opinion. were if they were worried about uh, like issues with like illnesses at CES, they uh -huh. would have at least a venue three times as large. Yeah. Oh Fair man, enough. it's gonna be such a nightmare, especially like CES, like the like goggles people are putting on their faces and then putting on other people's faces and all oh, yeah. they, they yeah, sanitize them all the time yeah it's very very they... i have not gotten sick from ces before neither have That's i good. yeah nice. so i don't know if i got sick from e3 probably i i, I got a little bit sick from e3 yeah yeah probably okay need we recount the tale of homelessness in la no, no. okay <laughs> didn't think so way uh, good all right so is there anything else to say about the uh, summer of gaming or uh, E3 2021? Andrew, you were gone for a day yeah. that segment. So anything you'd like to add? Apologies. No, I just think it's interesting that, like, you know, someone's hopping on, on this. And, like, yeah. it's, it, hopefully it goes goes well. We'll see. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know what it's going to be exactly, but it could yeah, be cool. I, no, I mean, it's a giant mystery box, to say the least. Yeah, I could, it guess this could show that, like, E3 doesn't need to exist. If they pull us off digitally and it works, so right, yeah, we'll see. Which might work, I don't know. So, uh, they, have the, they, have, died. they have the audience and they have the I'm sure know. you guys talked about this, but they have the audience and they have you know the, the, the means, so yeah, definitely yeah. possible. Yep, IGN is probably the best people suited to do this, mm -hmm. uh, honestly. So, yeah. yeah, all right, so uh, moving right along, uh, my news piece today, I'm sure you've heard about Zoom. And if you're a student or you're in the corporate world in any capacity, you've probably been using it somewhat heavily the pa uh -huh. these past couple of weeks. Zoom shot out of obscurity into the mainstream all of a sudden, literally overnight. Now yeah. everyone and their dog kind of knows what Zoom is. So, well, you know, there is this in the uh, cybersecurity world, there's this saying that basically goes along of, you know, security by obscurity, right? Where it's like, if your product isn't used by that many people, you can get a little bit slacky with the uh, security around that product and everything, just because you're going to have less people probing it, trying to look for uh, exploits and everything. Because if you get into the world of, you know, um, developing malware for whatever reason, whether or, you know, trying to figure out attacks, you know, whether or not you're doing uh, pen testing and whatnot, stuff like that then you want to target the products that are most widely used among people. So uh, anyway, um, moving on from that little uh, bit of info, uh, Zoom, right, is literally spyware, OK? Zoom's newfound popularity and relevance has done led people to do a ton of research and a ton of probing into the inner workings of Zoom, both as a program and as a company. So uh, some highlights. Um, until recently, Zoom straight up lied about having end-to-end -end encryption. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. Pretty fun. Uh, some calls were routed through data centers in chi China by mistake, despite not, uh, you know, the calls not taking place anywhere near China. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of, there is a lot of stuff like this. Um, and so, you know, let's see, there are data mining features uh, in Zoom. Also, let's see, you can dig up a ton of stuff. I would recommend going to um, r slash privacy. There's a good mega thread with a ton of sources and everything. I'll pull up uh, this article from uh, Vice Motherboard, which is their tech section. Uh, Zoom iOS app sends data to Facebook even if you don't have a Facebook account. Uh, let's nice. see here. Headline is accurate, by the way. Um, Washington Post. Thousands of Zoom video calls left exposed on open web. Many of the videos include personally identifiable information and deeply intimate conversations recorded in people's homes. Uh, thousands of personal Zoom videos have been left viewable on the open web, highlighting the privacy risk to millions of Americans if they ship many of their personal interactions to video calls in an age of social distancing. Uh, the uh, summary of that, uh, let's see here. Uh, New York Times, a uh, feature on Zoom secretly displayed data from people's LinkedIn profiles on accident. So if you Delish. link your Zoom account to your LinkedIn profile, then it was displaying it and you may or may not know. 
Uh, let's see here. Protonmail.com. So Protonmail is an end-to-end -end uh, email service that's free. I actually have an account with them. Use it from time to time. Um, anyway. Um, Zoom allows your boss to track your attention during calls, shares the copious amounts of data it collects with third parties. It's already had a major security vulnerability. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of issues with uh, Zoom, and they're evidenced by if you go on YouTube and look for uh, Zoom bombing, as the trend has become known, and everything you yeah. know, people getting into uh, Zoom meetings and just making it go awry and everything. I have not been a victim of that yet because uh, my university has actually had a decent, competent, like decently, a uh, decently competent way of setting it up. So, yeah. yeah. So there's that, but then, you know, not everyone is as tech-savvy as others. Like, Andrew, you were t uh, saying this before the pre-show and everything with Zoom. You know, you got face raid going and make yourself a hamburger yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. It's, it's an, I like the app, but like now I'm, like, all worried about it because I don't want these things that I, you know, right. mm, yeah. record, you know, like, I don't want these conversations I'm having on here or these lessons or whatever you want to call them, like, uploaded somewhere else, right? Like, sure. Right. Everyone has I, a right to privacy, right? Yeah, right. Like I, yeah. I record them and then I promptly delete them off of my hard drive. Uh -huh. like, you yeah. know, like so. Yeah. Yeah, it's just weird. So yeah, all of these um, privacy issues have kind of uh, conglomerated into several high-level companies. Um, the most named of which uh, being SpaceX and Tesla saying uh both run by elon musk saying that it's just like yeah we're, we can't use zoom anymore because it's not safe for corporate secrets yeah whatever they sure. it. so yeah. they definitely find it risk there um and then also the fbi has sent out a warning regarding the whole zoom bombing thing uh and the zoom as a platform being open to further exploits no so. I, I believe i updated my zoom the other day and it's like requiring passwords now for almost everything is it okay yeah i want to say unless you have direct link like you can't yeah. just type in a meeting uh like I, well, I believe it was having people just typing in numbers and just joining random meetings so sure. i think so i think that's how they were zoom bombing or whatever you want to call it yeah uh, everyone would just type in the same one and join a random thing and just go nuts yeah um so what now what it is if you're you have to have a password unless you have the like, direct link i believe is what i read in the update yeah, so my, uh, my, the way my university has it set up is like uh, there's a direct link that you click on that's specific to each class and everything. Okay. And it goes through um, an SSO, uh, the single sign-on uh, verification through your university account. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. far to my knowledge, there's, I've only known of one issue my university has had with it, and that happened to a friend of mine. So sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah, so uh, yeah. But yeah, lots you know, of stuff it's... coming out around Zoom, and it's like, yeah, you know, I think I guess the bottom line here is that they were not ready for the jump in popularity, right? So not everything was as spick and span as normal. I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's the whole uh, security through obscurity thing I was talking about at the beginning of the segment. Yeah. Anyway, Matt, you you're make a point. Like this, this could have been Google's greatest chance to resurrect Hangouts. Truly, though, that could Hangouts have, yeah. exist still, right? <laughs> Not it's really. no longer under developmental support, no. Oh, okay. But it can still use it. All, you can use it, yeah. All yeah. purposes, it's dead. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a walking is, corpse. This is interesting as Discord now is even upping their game. Like, they've got screen share and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I don't know how new that is. It's new to me. Slack. So. Oh. So, the thing is, it's like Discord, oh, you know, they tried to put themselves a platform uh, to be a substitute for, like, these meetings and everything, right? Yeah. Although Discord does not really have, um, you know, Discord does not really have, sorry, um, Discord does not really have any sort of encryption that I'm aware yeah. of, or at least mm. if they do, then it's not really, um, like, they don't talk about it a whole lot. And, you know, it's just like, even with their 50-person um, limit into a group now, or like call or whatever, or what they temporarily did for uh, COVID-19 here mm -hmm. is that it does not have the back-end infrastructure regardless to handle like a 50-person video call. You know, right. some classes are 400 people and you get the teacher up there saying, everyone needs to turn on their webcam. Yeah. So, you know, that's 400 video streams coming in through Blah. Zoom. Yeah. Bang, server crash. You need a webcam stream. I don't get it. Huh? Why do you need a webcam stream for it? I like, my guess you, is that you have to, 
dorking around the entire time. Like they want people yeah. to be paying attention. So like, yeah. if you have the webcam on, it's like a little sure. bit of pressure to like. You can't even guarantee that in a regular classroom setting. No, you're right. Yeah. I used to sleep no. in class all the time, but. Oh, uh, there was something to be said about it too. Being like being able to see your classmates, also and being able to see your professor too. So yeah. Yeah, when I host some meetings and stuff, like, you know, everyone usually has their camera on because they see everyone else's face. Because it's like, yeah. oh, I haven't seen these people in person in, like, a long, you know, a couple weeks now. Yeah. I'm used to seeing them, you know, at least twice a week. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I don't know, so it's like uh, my university has a lot of foreign students, which is fine, nothing against that, right? Or whatever. But it's like, you know, definitely English second language is somewhat of an issue from time mm -hmm. to time or whatever. And so it's just like, you know, they might say something that to a native English speaker is going to like sound wrong, like tonal wise or whatever, you know, might misconstrue. It's like, oh, this guy is pissed or whatever, right? <laughs> but in reality, you know, he's really not. And it's like having a video, you kind of read their body language a little bit. Oh, he's not pissed. It was just like, you know, sure. you know didn't come out right so fair enough true yeah, yeah. Hmm. and it just feels nice to like see people's faces when you talk right <laughs> exactly yeah like, there's a reason this po this podcast format is an audio only yeah Ooh, well like if i like if, you initially know, it's an audio yeah. yeah like when you know you're 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 teach if you're a teacher and you're broadcasting you're like man i'm just talking to a bunch of blank squares like am Who's i even talking listening? to anybody like who Correct. yeah exactly it's like, y'all are just doing other stuff yeah exactly yeah i see makes sense but yeah, so you can go and research all the Zoom stuff by yourself, um, if at all like viable for your specific situation. Recommend looking into alternatives, but sometimes you might just be forced to use yeah. Zoom because there's mm. actually no other competitor out there that does all the things that Zoom actually does that well. That's the thing. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, well, they won. You know, they won. Yeah, they're pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like, yeah, overall, it's like that experience with the service, but, you know, there's just some mm. details out there that make you kind of question everything. So, yeah. with that, I think that'll wrap up the uh, news segment. Matt is getting blurrier and blurrier, and my monitor just <laughs> You are again. getting blurrier know, and blurrier. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Taylor, your background is, like, clear, still clear, but you, you've just gotten <laughs> pixelated as hell. <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening to you also on my end. Yeah, You're like, okay. Here, let's reset everything. The okay. Matrix yeah. is getting glitched. Um, yeah. Same all, thing's happened to Anthony. We're and all turning fine, into uh, Taylor's fine. favorite like genre of games. Oh. <laughs> the trifecta. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. And... Oh yeah. Okay. Indie platform in 2D. Yep. <laughs> totally. All right. Um, Anthony, what's uh, what 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 games are releasing? Two games. Uh, this week. Oh, wow. Yep. Nice. Uh, so, on April the 7th, we have Disaster Report, which is going to be PC, <laughs> PS4, and Switch. Okay. And on Leave April... the room! What are you doing? Why is that game coming? <laughs> and on April 10, we have Fun Fantasy 7, which is going to PS4 only. Winky, shut up. Right. What are you doing? Right. Wait, today is... Or not... Uh, I'm sorry. This week is Final Fantasy 7 Remake Week? Correct. Disaster Report 4? Pinky. Nice. Wait. Okay. Wait, isn't like isn't this disaster report about like the Fukushima disaster or something? Maybe. There there's like I remember the disaster report on PS2. It's they're weird games. Okay. Uh so I haven't actually seen anything about this though. Okay. I'll I'll check on that in just a second. But yeah, I remember I swear like uh, reading about a game that was like that or whatever that was talking about the Fukushima disaster. I think, from, uh, I think it London. came out Stop, yeah, stop, it came out in Japan two years ago. Stop, oh, so, okay. Uh, Wait. Uh, you probably have seen this somewhere. Okay, might have been this one then. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Let's let's take a quick lucky, or else this will start bothering me all day, let me tell you. Um, oh. That hold cat. on. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Hello, cat. You just kind of melted there. <laughs> As cats do. Uh, let's see. Disaster report four. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disaster Report 4 Plus Summer Memories is an action adventure game developed by Granzella, released in 2018 Japan for PS4. It is the fourth entry in the Disaster Report series, originally meant to be released on the PS3. Stretch was halted due to the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, but resumed after demand from fans. The Nintendo Switch version was announced in September 2019. The goal is to escape the destroyed city, finding safe paths through collapsing buildings, and dealing with panicked fleeing people. You see, that's what I'm talking about right there, that whole, like, 
Japanese read the room thing where it's like they're not going to release media that deals with the disastrous content, especially if a hyper relevant disaster just happened. Yeah. Oh, is this so. a VR only game? I think so. Oh, weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Scary. This is an interesting line I just want to read. <laughs> the game has a new cleanliness parameter for the character. If the character oh gets goodness. too dirty, stress will rise. The player can use the toilet to increase the main character's cleanliness parameter. <laughs> what is this game? Fascinating. Like VR bathroom simulator? Yeah, okay. you, gotta, um, you, know, you gotta simulate the whole hygiene thing. Totally. Yeah. Well, like, hey, I mean, it gets people washing hands virtually now, too. Right, yeah. Encourage washing hands wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. No, yeah, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's try to interesting. Uh, so anyway, Matt, where can the good people find you on Twitter? At filmed by G Man. That's where <laughs> they can find me. Okay. How about? <laughs> I know how to yes, Anthony. The other thing. Yes, Anthony. I was just watching something on C and Valorant. Oh, okay. That's just funny. Okay. So okay. where Matt else you can find me? You can, yeah. you can also find me and Taylor at our uh, Culture Gaming's affiliate YouTube channel, Tech for Thought, where I just got a notification during this podcast that we got a subscriber. Jeez. Nice. <laughs> Jesus, the subscriber count has gone up since the last time I've seen it. We are now at 31 subscribers, oh, apparently. Nice. Oh. What was the last time we checked? 20. Nice. Those games. Plus 11. <laughs> Plus 11. Okay. Nice, nice. That's nice. It's been two months. I need to. I need to produce stuff. I'm gonna start paying Sean to edit. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So that's you could find me at, there. You could also, uh, we we have a Twitter for it as well. What's it? I forget. It's a tech underscore the number four underscore thought for our uh, affiliate YouTube's channels Twitter. Well, all right. So hit those places up. Andrew, where can the good people find you on Twitter? Yeah, you can find me at Duronsky, D-R-N-S-K-I, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Uh, cool. Yeah, you can see all the fun stuff there. Hopefully, I might be streaming on Twitch as well. Same. So. Okay. Streaming. Yeah, What's up? Yeah, go check it out. Uh, the few times I've watched your stream, they've always been very well produced. So, oh, thank you. Awesome. Yes. Uh, Anthony. I am at SameAntMan19. Um, okay. I don't tweet at all. Uh, no, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly do. Uh, I stream a bit here and there. I have been streaming some Apex Legends. I haven't really been doing it too well, though. Um, I keep having technical difficulties <laughs> oh, when streaming. Um, did you guys see that golden Mozambique thing? Yeah. No. Oh, no. so April 1st, about it. They, they put a golden Mozambique in the game that was like had nine shots, shot ridiculously fast, like no recoil. It was insane. Yeah. Like, it was really cool. That sounds cool. absolutely magical. Is it like yeah. a one shot as well? I don't know. I mean, it, but people were just melting each other with it. It was pretty funny. Yeah. I'd imagine that sounds pretty great. Yeah. Maybe, um, sorry, Anthony, to cut you off. No, that's okay. So I probably won't be streaming Apex anymore because I can't seem to stream it. Okay. Hello. Why did you exit full screen? <laughs> that was weird. Um, so I will be streaming yeah. other stuff, but whatever. And that's it from me. Uh. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Imperius seven eight zero nine. That's at i n f e r i u s seven eight zero nine. Uh, yeah. And then uh, over at Ted for Thought, as Matt previously mentioned. But, mm -hmm. You know, we did shoot an iPhone review. I know, but I've been working a lot at my work. I'm honestly no. just gonna <laughs> hand it off to Sean. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying it's late. So I mean, we already have the stuff shot for an iPhone review. So if Sean yes. wanted to edit that, we could do that. Mm. Yeah, I plan on. Yeah. There you go. Handing that off to him. Okay. I have it all in this bag. Nice. <laughs> nice. Got the thumb drive. Right, so, yeah, that'll. Oh, it's uh... not a thumb drive, but. I lose it. Unfortunate. I lose it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, if oh, I lost dear. this bag, I think Taylor would probably kill me. <laughs> would, uh, would, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyone else have anything else they'd like to add? No. Oh, I, uh, so. I do want to yeah. say I found a very fun article on our website called, mm. um, what is the true, or what is the true identity of Zipper T Bunny? Oh, no. We're talking about that bunny. <laughs> is that um, on our website? It's on our website. Liz Grimsley wrote it. Check it out. It's pretty oh, fun. Fascinating. Uh, so give that a, a read if you want uh, some theories into who uh, Zipper Bunny is. Nice. Excellent.
<laughs> Excellent. Yeah, very timely. Only, yeah. only the most enthralling. Hey, that's the content I live for, so. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is great. Yeah. Can All right, so. Link if anybody needs it. Oh, thank you. Gotcha. Thanks, fam. All right, so with that, that is going to wrap up this week in gaming. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We hope to see you guys next week. Same great time, same great place, same great channel, same great people. And we will see you all next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, social distance, wash your hands. The sooner y'all do that, the sooner the curve flattens, and the sooner I can go out clubbing again, okay? Wow. <laughs> Taylor, you don't yeah. club. I know. No, I know. You know that, all right? I know. The sooner I can go out to eat, you know. Idea. Okay, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. the sooner I can actually like sit. He down gets takeaway every night. <laughs> Not anymore. Oh yeah. Anthony, yeah. I will have you know that it's like the last time, the last meal I had in the United States was a bag of Skittles. Nice. Car can I don't know what's worse. No, you, like, I think it's worse considering Skittles a meal. It's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. At least five people at the time told him to eat something else where is it regular skittles uh yeah we we all told you to eat a regular meal yeah. we're like no nah, a bag of skittles is fine I'm normal good. bag yeah normal bag normal, normal bag. size bag yeah <laughs> it's like one of the halloween ones oh. right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man all right anyway uh before this goes anywhere off the rails see you all next week Bye-bye.